On this Halloween night in Tampa, two teams who hope they are not masquerading as Conference USA contenders go head to head at Raymond James Stadium as the Cincinnati Bearcats take on the South Florida Bulls. There's a developing story on the Cincinnati sideline. For more on that, let's go down to Rob Stone. As Sean, Bearcats offensive coordinator Rusty Burns checked into a local hospital today, complaining of just basically not feeling well. According to the staff, he's now resting comfortably, but they are without their offensive coordinator today. So obviously, who's going to be calling the plays? I asked one assistant at 7.26 p.m. local time, who's going to call? He just smiled and said, I have no idea. I just hunted down Rick Minner about two and a half minutes ago. He said, we got under control. It's going to be kind of a conglomerate of offensive assistants making some calls, but it's all going to be going through me. It'll be interesting to see how the communication on their offense works early on. Especially given that Rick Minter is also the defensive coordinator, so he's going to run the defense and at least part of the offense here tonight as well. South Florida won the toss and deferred. So they kick off. And it's Justin Geisler kicking off. Tedrick Harwell from the goal line. And he stumbles down at the 12 yard line. I'm getting all kinds of interference in my headset. Cincinnati, as Mike told you, quarterback by Gino Gadulli, the three-year starter, junior from Fort Thomas, Kentucky. Just 10 minutes outside of Cincinnati. He told us when we visited with him yesterday. It's been a frustrating season for Gadulli. With difficulty in the passing game, brought on by a lot of drop balls. A problem that they've been working diligently as a team to solve, and they hope. The receivers will do a better job of hanging on to the football tonight. They go out of the shotgun with Richard Hall, the running back to the right of Gadouli. And the pass is complete to Bill Poland, a true freshman who's been getting more playing time lately and thriving with the increased playing time. Hall, the featured back with Van, the fullback, Ross, Murray, and Dolly, the wide receivers they open without a tight end. The center, Josh Schneideroff, is a three-year starter. And the leader of that offensive line is Kyle, Kyle Takovitz. He does a lot of the adjusting of protections and calling at the line of scrimmage. Out of the gun again, and this time the inside handoff to Hall. He's out across the 20 to the 21-yard line, about a yard shy of the first down. Up front for South Florida on defense. Jones, Coble, Leroy Selman Jr., the son of the terrific NFL Hall of Famer, and Tim Jones. The linebackers are Nicholas Jones and Davenport. And in the secondary, Brown, Reed, Verpale, and Hemingway. They'll play four different cornerbacks who will rotate tonight. Gadouli under center for the first time on third down and one. And a handoff to Hall. He has the first down. Out to the 34, tackled there by Josh Balloon. Well, I think in this instance, was your offensive coordinator out, and they said, you heard Rob say they were going to kind of all agree on something. I think Rick Minner needs to appoint one person and take charge of that and call the place and live with it for now. If he needs to change it a little bit down the road, so be it. But I think to start it off, I think you need one voice, and that's it. Not everybody chirping in on what they think needs to be called. I, I think you're right about that. We'll, we'll continue with that in a moment. Out of the shotgun. Gadouli zips one through the hands of his intended receiver. Looking for Thaddeus Lewis. He's a converted defensive back, and there's another ball right through the hands of a receiver, an ominous start to this night for Rick Minter's receiving court. Well, that's been a problem, but I, I want to go back to this play calling issue. Minter, as you know, Sean, Mike, he focuses on defense. He spent the entire week in the defensive room. So I don't know how much input he can have into what the offense is going to do here. And I think Mike is right. They got to find a guy and let him make the calls. Well, he doesn't look at all involved in the moment. You saw him chatting with the official. Certainly he wasn't busy calling the play there. Richard Hall again for a very short game. And of course, on the Cincinnati side, they're used to a lot of turnover and change on their coaching staff. During Rick Minner's 10 seasons, they've averaged five assistant coaches leaving per year. They've had very little continuity in this program under Minter. Well, and it's more than just coaches. Usually they lose coordinators, yeah. offensive coordinators and defensive coordinators, but he keeps the same system here so that the players don't have to learn anything new. Third down and eight, the Bearcats from their own 26. Gadouli under pressure and sacked. 
Sacked back at the 19-yard line by Tim Jones. That's Kevin Verpale also in there on a blitz. Their 22nd sack of the year. These guys bring it around the corners, up the gut. There was nowhere for Godelli to go, or Godelli to go. I'm sorry. These guys coming around the ends, they force them up, and there's no no room to step as the interior line gets a push as well. Chet Urban on the punt for Cincinnati. A very high tumbling punt fielded by Brian Fisher. At the 45 yard line, a 35 yard putt and a loss of one on the return. Jamar Enzor, who's the starting middle linebacker, made the tackle. Here's Ronnie Banks, the junior from New Orleans, one of only five players in this South Florida program who is not from the state of Florida. He's in his first year as a starter, and it's been an up and down year for Banks, an understudy for the last couple of years behind four year starter Markwell Blackwell, who was drafted by the New York Jets after a terrific career. And Banks goes out of the gun and swings it out quickly to Fisher. He's down at the 48-yard line, tackled by Jamar Enzor, a gain of three. The rest of the offense for the South Florida Bulls, their big playmaker at wide receiver is Huey Whitaker. They open in the spread offense with four wide receivers. And the offensive line, Alex Herons moved back and forth between center and guard. In recent weeks, he's back at center, where he's seen more action over the years tonight. Keep an eye on Derek Sorosi as well, an outstanding pass blocker at tackle. The defensive front, outstanding ends in Frazier and Cole, with Love and Wright providing the size in the middle, particularly Wright. Russell Enzor and Hagler, the strength of the defense at linebacker. Monahan, a three-year starter at safety. In the defensive backfield for Cincinnati. They're 20th in the nation in total defense. Giving up just 309 yards per game. Banks has a man open, but it's too high for Dewan Green. And the South Florida Bulls will punt. You know, one thing about these no huddle offenses, yeah. you get your team off the field in a hurry. Your defense doesn't get much of a chance to rest when you go three and out because you're not really running that clock. No, no, there's still a plenty of time, and both these teams do use the no huddle now, and, and they are different no huddle. Sometimes they'll hurry at the line, and sometimes they'll take their time and call the play, but neither team goes in the huddle. Brandon Baker punts for USF, and it goes out of bounds near the 20 yard line. The official still walking. He'll mark the ball at the 25 yard line. That's where Gadouli and the Bearcats will take over. First and 10 after a 26 yard punt and after this timeout. This. On first and 10 for Cincinnati, the handoff to Richard Hall. He's tackled by the safety Kevin Verpale at the 31 yard line, a gain of six for Hall. He's a junior from Cincinnati, 24 years old, started his collegiate career at Ohio State, but did not become academically eligible there. Came to Cincinnati and had a very good year, 15th in the nation right now, averaging 111 yards per game. He gets the handoff and goes ahead to the 34. About a yard short of the first down, third down and one upcoming. Well, he, he came back home to Cincinnati. Right. You know, he went to Ohio State, grew up here, grew up in Cincinnati thinking about going to Ohio State and then figured out, well, I want to go home. Home is good. Yeah, he's had to pick up the slack again for this offense where Kuduli's had to drop passes and just not been on as much this year or receiver. So a, a lot of pressure has fallen on that young man's shoulders and the offensive line in front of him. Paul with no fullback this time, banged down very close to the 35-yard line, appears to be right on it, and in all likelihood a first down. J.R. Reed came up from his safety spot to put a pretty good hit on Hall. Well, whoever is calling the plays kind of likes Hall. Yeah. <laughs> whoever it is has figured out, I'm going to ride Hall until I figure out the game plan I want to run in this ballgame since 
Burns is not around to, to run the offense tonight for Cincinnati. Right, right now, not a whole lot you have to worry about in calling plays. Hand off right, hand off left. <laughs> easy, easy play call. Last year, they were an outstanding passing team on their way to an appearance in the New Orleans Bowl. This year, they've had to lean more heavily on the run with the problems with their receivers. Good catch on the sideline. That might have been Jim Levitt. <laughs> Actually, a pretty good uh, decision by Gadouli. Oh, yeah. He threw that ball away because he wanted to go down the field, but USF double covered the deep guy, and Gadouli had nowhere to go, and he threw it away. And that's a guy who's been a starter since his freshman year, making a good decision. Smart move. When you roll out, it turns into a two-receiver route. Both receivers are covered. You say, all right, you know what? I'm not going to hang back here. I'll just throw it away. We'll live for second and ten. Hall and Booker Van next to Gadouli as he goes out of the gun with a lot of time. Has the completion, cutting across the middle. It's the fullback Van tackled in the open field by Johnny Jones at the 40 yard line. And that'll bring up third down and five for Cincinnati. It's just a crossing route that's going to come all the way around the field. And Gadouli's going to wait for it to clear. A little circle out of the backfield, wait for him to come and clear. There you go. Let's dump it right to him. A little bit of space zone, just run in front of the zone, throw it, and that's when you want your your receiver or running back in this instant to catch the ball and you try and make that first guy miss. But then again, this defense is number one conference USA in South Florida. And Cincinnati's, by the way, is number two. South Florida giving up just 292 yards per game. There's a catch by Thaddeus Lewis and a first down out to the 48 where he was upended by J.R. Reed. Well, they, had, they didn't get a lot of that, Mike, earlier in the season. And these receivers, a young group, replacing a great group of receivers they had last year. And it's been frustrating for Gadouli because they really haven't gotten up to speed yet. Well, maybe that why, that's why this is a cornerback, now a wide receiver. It's <laughs> because they've had some issues at wide receiver, so they're trying to convert who they can. Lewis was just moved to offense a couple of weeks ago. They had a bye week prior to their game last week against Army. They move him over from defense. Gadouli throws it up for grabs, and it is intercepted. It was intended for Derek Ross and picked off by J.R. Reed. Well, we just talked about a smart yeah. play. Why didn't he do the same thing there? It's the same route <laughs> yeah. to the other side. Yeah. Roll out, two receiver route, and what did we say? He threw it away last time because no one was open. Look at this. They got four green jerseys, one guy, nobody's open, and he is too smart a quarterback, too experienced to make plays like that. He threw up a duck. I mean, uh, plain and simple, he threw up a duck. And he's been starting since he was a freshman. And that's not on the receivers. That, that's just a poor decision. It's been a frustrating year for Gadouli. He's tried to keep the proper perspective with all the problems with drop balls. There's a deep handoff and going nowhere. Dewan Green dropped for a loss back at the 29 yard line. Mike Wright, the defensive tackle. Help from Andre Frazier made the stop. The interception by J.R. Reed, his third of the season. And he now has 14 career interceptions. He's the all time leader. At USF, of course, when a program's only been around for seven years, <laughs> and you've been in the program for a while, you have a chance to be a leader in a category, a better chance than you might in some other programs. This South Florida program in just its third year in Division 1A, they are the newest Division 1A program, while Cincinnati is the fifth oldest college football program. So what, what are you saying? We got young and old, or and young and old? Cincinnati started playing football in 1885. Only Rutgers, Michigan, Navy, and Minnesota have played football longer than Cincinnati. And open, but Banks couldn't find Brian Fisher. Well, here's here's the other side of it. Gadouli gets it there, and the guys have been dropping it. And Banks has guys open and can't get it to him. That's that's it's been the issue for both these offenses, both these quarterbacks. Um, Fisher was out there. Yeah, oh, he was wide open. Well, you said at the top, get the ball in this guy's hands. He will, he will make you look silly when he gets in the open field. Brandon Baker on the punt. His first one went out of bounds. This one a wobbly kick. And it gets a good bounce for South Florida. And then goes out of bounds. 
near the 23 yard line. 47 yard punt. It hit Antonio Warren, one of the coverage men at the 24. That's where they'll mark it. No score midway through the first quarter in Tampa. An appropriate sight in the sky over Tampa on this Halloween. First ever football meeting between Cincinnati and South Florida. South Florida in its first year playing football in Conference USA and perhaps its <laughs> last. <laughs> that was quick. Glad to know you. <laughs> and it's quite likely that both of these teams within the next week will accept invitations to join the Big East. Gaduli keeps it and runs out to the 32. That is a gain of eight for Gaduli, who's been more of a running threat this year. Again, that's made necessary by the departure of this trio of receivers who aided him so much last year. Well, and they were big play receivers. They were seniors who made great plays, and even when they were juniors, they made big plays. So this is a different situation for Gaduli. He is now the veteran with young receivers, and he has not been in that position before. Carl Jones now in a tailback. And he follows the fullback, Kyle Kester, but not very far. Dropped for a loss. Back at the 28-yard line, Terrence Royal, the defensive end, sophomore from Tampa, made the tackle. Here's Rob. Well, guys, I'm trying to keep an eye on exactly how the offensive communication is going down here. When the offense came off the field last time, offensive line coach Steve Shankweiler, in his first year with the program, the offensive line coach, talking with his big grunts down there working the grease board. But the skill guys, QB, wide receiver, running back, just sat on the bench. Nobody spoke to him. Change of possession. They are up and on the field. Wow. You wonder who's taking charge. Third down and six. Heavy rush and Gaduli throws it much too far. And a flag thrown. The intended receiver Thaddeus Lewis did get tangled up with the defender. And Rick Minter nods his head in agreement with the call. This has been a consistent problem for Jim Levitt. Penalties. They're among the most penalized teams in the country. Last week at Southern Miss in a loss. They were penalized 13 times. For 129 yards. Oh, it's awful. They're averaging 10 penalties a Defense game. Defense is pass interfering. Penalty brings the ball to the spot of the foul. First down. 10 penalties a game and 88 yards a game, and they just can't give up that much. Here you go. Bumped into him now. You wonder, boy, that's that ball's not catchable uh, at all. Doesn't look catchable at all. Yeah. Not a bit. But Mike, I, I want to get to Goodooley after this play. I think this is a big night for him. But let's let the play run first. Well, if you want, I'll ask him to hold the play. Uh, so it would be <laughs> helpful, but I I'll wait. Okay. <laughs> the deep handoff instead of fake. And a good one by Gaduli finds the tight end Dennis Hart with a first down. Out of bounds at the 38-yard line. They'll spot the ball back now at the 41. J.R. Reed with another tackle. That's a 15-yard gain. They're going to wait for me now? Well, you better hurry. Better hurry. Okay, no, huddle. no huddle. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a big night for him because he's the veteran guy. He's without his offensive coordinator. I mean, he's been a starter since a freshman. He's got young receivers. Somebody's got to take charge if they're going to go to a bowl game. Somebody has to take charge of this offense and this team and make something happen, and he's the guy to do it. First and 10, Cincinnati. On the draw, it's Carl Jones, and he gets nothing, perhaps a half yard. But that's all for Jones. He is one of 10 Cincinnati players here tonight from the state of Florida. They've done well through the years, as have a lot of Division I-A programs recruiting in this state. And Gadooey was the biggest recruit that they've had in years. People thought he was going to go to Kentucky, someplace else. But he shocked everybody by staying home, going to Cincinnati. And I mean, he, this team is built around him. This offense is anyway. Because it's nice to be close to home. He gets to go home, have mom do his laundry, he gets to eat her great spaghetti and meatballs. He's on target again to the tight end, Dennis Hart. He's another Floridian from Harlem, Florida. J.R. Reed and Kevin Verpale made the tackle. The ball spotted at the 33, two yards shy of a first down. What, what also helps with a nice running game with Richard Hall is the play action works. You suck in the linebackers in the line a little bit and let your tight end, in this case, get out and get open, get a few steps, and Kaduli does a nice job of delivering it right now. He's five out of eight passing. And had one intercepted on the last possession by J.R. Reed. 
That's the tight end Brett Selleck, the true freshman who's seen more playing time lately in motion. Throw back to an open receiver. It's hard again. He lunged for the first down and appeared to get it. They'll give him the spot where he extended the ball. Maurice Jones made the tackle. It looks like he got the ball inside the 31 for a first down. He was open for a second and a half. <laughs> and then he got converged on. Here you go, roll right. This is a throwback. It's going to release out late. He's open. Now he's not. <laughs> Three guys converged pretty quickly. Nice job of reaching forward. Good stretch. There's the yellow line. Say, he doesn't see the yellow line, obviously, but he certainly <laughs> sees the sticks and knows where he's got to get by. <laughs> that yellow line isn't down there for no, him. No, I, I, you know what? I keep thinking it is. I say, just look at it. You see it right there. Go past it. But they can't. We got to teach you about computers. I, I, Maybe that's the next technology. Find a way Listen. to beam a beam of light right across the field like that. Well, so the players and people in the stadium can see it as well. I'm not worried about that right now. I'm worried about going out and trick or treating in a minute here in the stands. Give me some candy. I thought it was very inappropriate of you to be taking candy from youngsters as we made our way through the stands. I know. Did you see him do that? That was awful. Listen, if they're holding it out and showing me what they got, I'm just there to, you know, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm kind of the taste tester. <laughs> make sure these kids are eating good stuff. Yeah, you must have been very hungry. We're at Raymond James Stadium on <laughs> Halloween. Cincinnati and South Florida with identical records of four and three overall, two and two in conference. Cincinnati driving for the first and ten at the 31 yard line. They hand it off, and this is George Murray, who's also the backup quarterback. Tackled nicely in the open field. Looked like a promising play when he took it on the reverse, but Tim Jones held his ground and dropped Murray at the 29, a gain of only two. Yes, Tim Jones held his ground, but so did J.R. Reed deep, number 32, Mr. Takeaway. He stayed back, took away the trickeration. That forced Murray to try and run and get what he could out of it. And he did the right thing. Murray did the right thing, and he made the decision quickly. Good coverage by Reed, and then a nice job. Out of Jones coming back, taking a great angle and cutting down Murray. The well, Reed's off to a great start already tonight. The interception and a number of tackles. On second down, it's Kyle Kester, but a flag down for an illegal procedure against Cincinnati. The play does not count. And J.R. Reed's a guy who was not highly recruited. A matter of fact, Jim Levitt told the story that he kept going over to Hillsborough High School here in the Tampa area to watch other players. And he kept noticing Reed and liking Reed, but he wondered, well, why isn't anybody else recruiting Reed? Maybe I'm looking at this guy and seeing too much. Finally, he said, forget about it. I'm trusting my instincts. He went over to the young man's house, told him, I want to offer you a scholarship. Reed took it, and he's been a stalwart, and as we mentioned, their all-time leader in interceptions. You know, and there's a lesson in that. There is a group mentality right. about recruiting. They are, a lot of guys figure, well, if nobody else is recruiting this guy, he must not be a player, and they don't trust their own instincts. This time, Levitt did. Tonight is Reed's 30th straight start. Gadouli had to throw it away as he was chased by Tim Jones and running out of room along the sideline. That'll bring up third down and long from the 34. You notice how they keep moving the pocket? Oh, yeah. yeah I guess they are really anticipating a lot of pressure off the edge from South Florida. So Gadouli is on the move every play. And again, South Florida came in with 21 sacks, already got one tonight, so they are a pressure defense so it is smart to move the pocket but when you move the pocket you also cut your field into a half or a third four wide receivers on third down and 13 the duly setting up a screen for Carl Jones has blockers lunges toward the marker that'll be very close needed to get just inside the 21 J.R. Reed with yet another tackle well, who's ever making, who's ever calling the plays? It's some great calls. I'll tell you that much. Excellent call. You see the D line. Look at them getting upfield. They all get suckered into it. The linebackers are backing off. A lot of green out there. That's taking advantage of what we just talked about, Rod. An aggressive defense that likes to come after you. Okay, come on, rush us. We'll dump it right over the top. Give our guy a lot of room to run. Gain of 13 and a first down for Cincinnati. Clock running under 225 left in the first quarter. Jones belted but bounced off the hit. And turns it into a game. J.R. Reed with his sixth tackle. There is a flag down in the middle of the field. Thrown at the 17-yard line. I think that flag's going to be a face mask at the end of the run. 
That's holding against Cincinnati, and that flag got hoisted. <laughs> that was a, I think, a farther flag throw than we've seen a pass tonight. <laughs> it's coming back. Holding, holding. on the offense. On the offense. Ten, Ten yards from the spot of the foul. We see first down. They're trying to run the inside zone here. Nice balance, but because he oh. takes a pop. Oh. Oh. Wow. How did he get away from that? Davenport just torched him. Now, Leroy Selman was in there yeah. as well. Leroy, Leroy Selman, Selman Jr. Wow. Yeah. I would say in that name. Oh. Ball back on the 27. Jones again managing to stay on his feet. And finally taken down to the 25, a hard earned two yards. There's Leroy Selman Jr. Now in his senior year. He mentioned his dad, one of the all time greats in the Pro Football Hall of Fame after a great career at Oklahoma. Leroy Jr. wears his dad's number 93 from his days playing for the Sooners. Leroy's already graduated. And is pursuing a second degree in speech communication. He got his degree in August in criminology. Tough luck for him, though. In uh, 01, he redshirted, and then in, uh, before the 02 season, he's playing in a pickup basketball game. Tears his ACL and misses the season. So I was talking to his dad a little bit before the game. Said he's running into some tough luck and you know looking to really turn it around this year. Jones on second and long, some nifty running down to the 15-yard line. Leroy Selman Sr. is now the athletic director yeah. here at the University of South Florida and is doing a great job maneuvering this program through all of its phases. Started out seven years ago as a Division I AA program, made the transition to Division I-A. This is now the third year, first year in Conference USA, and they'll likely join the Big East next week. Tell the truth, Mike. You weren't talking about his son. You were talking about his restaurant. Oh, let yeah. me tell you what. How about it? A little nice, some nice barbecue there. <laughs> Cincinnati dominating on time of possession, movement. But it looks like South Florida got back. Gadouli with all day to throw, oh. threw it behind Thaddeus oh. Lewis. And then he got... Leveled by J.R. Reed in a very late flag thrown, and that has Jim Levitt irate. Now that's, I believe that's the back judge, Tom Compton. He's the one who hoisted the holding flag a while ago, and that one came a little late. We're going to get a personal foul here. They had four of those last week against Southern Miss. They might pick this one up. Nope. It will be wow. a personal foul. There were other officials all looking at it. And it was an official way in the end zone who uh, fired that flag. We have a dead ball, personal foul on the defense. Half the distance to the previous spot, first down. I don't blame Jim Levin. I think this was borderline, fellas, but it wasn't a penalty. Oh, boy. Uh Ball behind, taking the one step and hits him. I'm sure the referee's thinking he was just going for him. He made no effort for the ball at all. He's going right for the man. That's why I threw it, and I, I don't know about that one. Timeout, South Florida with 39 seconds left in the first quarter. Well, the penalty against South Florida for a personal foul keeps the drive alive for Cincinnati. The Bearcats now looking at first and goal. Jim Levitt a little out of breath. He spent much of the TV timeout running up and down the sideline chasing after officials. Very angry about that personal foul call. He's been preaching to his team to be more disciplined. They have been personal foul prone. And I think he believes this time they were unfairly penalized. Two tight ends into the game for Cincinnati. And the delay to Carl Jones breaks the tackle and powers down to the two yard line. Tim Jones finally able to drag him down. We go back to this call and I think it's a bad call but I think what the official was thinking was that this receiver is defenseless can't protect himself and he wanted to protect the guy and throw a flag for that. I just don't like it. I mean you're taking away the fact that you're going to run the middle of the field. You're going to get hit. Cincinnati goes quickly. Gadouli after the fake. Touchdown, Mike Daniels. The freshman with the touchdown reception, giving Cincinnati the first points of the night. 
Did you see Jones get slammed at the line? I tell you what, I, I, I think South Florida went for the fake. <laughs> Just a little bit. <laughs> oh, man. That was fantastic. Fake there. Great play action. Easy throw for Gadouli and the touchdown. Can Urban to attempt the extra point? First career touchdown for the true freshman, Mike Daniels. Chris Manfredini on to try the extra point. And it is good. And with eight seconds left in the first quarter, the Bearcats have a seven to nothing lead. Impressive drive. Great job on third down by the Bearcats. 17, uh, rather 15 plays and 76 yards. They had the ball for more than seven minutes. Everybody was caught inside there, Rod. Well, when you see that, you know that linebackers and secondary guys yep. did not read their keys. They were watching the ball. Instead of watching what the linemen did and what the tight end did, they were watching the ball. Absolutely right. It's, it's undisciplined play there. Somebody's got to be responsible for everybody out on the field. Well, Jim Levitt saying, listen, he's probably telling his guys they got a gift on that one. And keep fighting, obviously. And I'm sure he's hopefully looking for a call to go his way. <laughs> well, he's not getting any home cooking. And there's the numbers on that drive that we spoke of. Two costly penalties against South Florida, aiding Rick Minter's offense. Been an up and down season for Cincinnati. They started three and zero. Oh. Wins against East Carolina, West Virginia, and Temple, then lost three in a row to Miami of Ohio, Southern Miss, and UAB. Bounced back last week with a come from behind win at home against Army. They come here four and three. How about the big smile on Mike Daniels' face there? You kid out of Princeton High School in Cincinnati, getting actually getting a touchdown now. He's, he's pretty excited over there. He was a quarterback in high school at Princeton High last year. Chris Manfredini kicks off. Short kickoff that goes out of bounds along the far sideline. Well, that was ugly. <laughs> I mean, what do you, you know what? You can't sugarcoat that. <laughs> How do you it's really out feel out about it? Out of bounds. South Florida elects to take the option of placing the ball at the 35 first down. That's like people talking about my career. Yeah, he was slow, but you made up for it by I made up for it by being weak. That was <laughs> that was a short kick and made up for it by going out of bounds. Well, it's interesting they have Manfredini kick off because yeah. he is their field goal kicker on shorter exactly. attempts. They use the punter Urban on long field goal tries. Just the seventh play from scrimmage for South Florida will be perhaps the final play of the quarter. No, there'll be one more because of the drop by Chris Ispra, a senior team captain who's had a very tough time this year with injuries. Had a dislocated elbow in preseason that kept him out of the first four games of the year. And then when he returned, he pulled a hamstring. He's still played in just one game. Tonight is his second game of the year. Tough to come back with yep. it. With, with, with a hammy like that, it's never 100%. Can always tweak it a little bit. Very difficult to come back during the year when you do that. On second and 10, Banks will tuck it and run. There's a flag thrown in the offensive backfield. Where you would ordinarily expect a holding call. That's an eight yard run. If it stands, Jamar Enzor made the tackle. Well, I'd say it's piling up on South Florida here now with the penalties. And these aren't little ones. <laughs> They're going for the big boys. <laughs> None of that little offside no. stuff. Take the big 15 every time. Well, last year they were the most penalized team in the country. South Florida went nine and Holding. two. Holding. On the offense. Ten yards from the previous spot. We play second down. We're going to extend the period for one on time down. Well, they're they're very aggressive and they play fast. And they don't want to take that away from their guys. They want them to play hard, play fast, and don't want to stifle them by always harping on the penalties. The ten most penalized teams in the country are 49 and 21 combined. Go figure. Yeah, everyone Among says them are Miami, Georgia, Washington State, Michigan State, and South Florida. Yeah, everyone says if you make penalties, you don't win, but you want to be aggressive. You want to be aggressive. Sometimes you'll take them. Banks throwing it deep, looking for Iskra, and it goes through his hands again.
Doug Monahan had the coverage for Cincinnati. That is the end of the first quarter. 7-0 Bearcats. Cincinnati leads 7-0. They had the football for 12 minutes and 53 seconds in the first quarter. Hey, it's Halloween. Indeed it is. <laughs> Third down and 20 for the South Florida Bulls. Banks trying to run away and cannot. He gets put on the turf at the 24. That's a sack on a loss of one. Jamie Murphy, a backup linebacker, junior from Tallahassee, Florida, credited with the sack. But I'll tell you what, this defensive line, the ends, Trent Cole and Andre Frazier, these guys are the catalyst. These guys turn the corner. They make the quarterback step up. And then you guys get to pick up the slack, your D tackles, or your linebacker in that case, get the sack. Brandon Baker punts. Carl Jones fielded at the 38. And is down at the 44 yard line. Let's check in again with Rob Stone. Well, Sean, obviously a lot of talk this time of the year about conference movings and teams and things like that. Board of Trustees here at the University of South Florida and the president had a meeting today. We're with Leroy Selman, the athletic director. What was discussed during that meeting and have you guys come to resolution on a potential move to the Big East? Well, it's just it was the tone of the meeting was very positive and uh, uh, it just reflected on an opportunity should the Big East extend the invitation. And uh, so we're just excited. It's a, it's a uh, compliment to the community and area that it's attracted that kind of that level of interest. All right, Leroy, we'll be back with you in one second after this play. First and 10 for Cincinnati with Gino Gadulli out of the shotgun. And has Terry Arnold wide open in the flat. A nice move to get past Kevin Verpale. And a gain of nine. Rob? You say the Big East is expected to offer. Will you guys accept should an offer come to the University of South Florida? Well, we, we want to wait till that offer is extended. I think it'll be a little bit premature at this point, but I would say, you know, we're very excited about uh, about the opportunity and um, that that we're being considered. And for us, that's a great compliment to what has, has taken place here over the past several years. And uh, but we'll wait and see what happens on uh, on Tuesday. He's a politician, guys. <laughs> Thanks, Leroy. <laughs> Sometimes when you're an athletic director, that's the nature of it. Terry Arnold, the ball carrier. And guys, let's face facts. Leroy right. couldn't say, it's a done deal. I was just going to say, Rob, before he runs away, tell him congratulations on going to the Big East because it's going to happen on Tuesday. On Tuesday, the Big East will vote. They will vote to extend an invitation to these two teams and Louisville, the other football playing member of Conference USA who will head to the Big East, and Marquette and DePaul. Will also go from Conference USA to join Big East basketball and other sports. You think his son knows? Would he, would he tell his son? I think it's his a son. Deal? Everybody knows, Rod. Everybody, everybody knows. The duly sacked, a flag thrown right where he's taken down. Might have been a face yep. mask. Yep. Terrence Royal, you could see his exasperation. He had the sack and a big loss. And everything going Cincinnati's way when it comes to the penalties, and oh. clearly that was a good call. And that's a personal foul as well. And it, it, you don't get to the quarterback much. When you get there, you certainly want to make the most of it. You don't want to ruin it with a penalty like that. Royal knew it. Personal, personal foul, Saints match on the defense. 15 yards in the previous spot, first down. Now they're going to be at their average before halftime. See, a good job not jumping, didn't leave his feet. Oh, yeah, he got it and ripped his head right around. Good call. Excellent job getting there, but you know, you get those hands, you're just trying to grab anything as the quarterback Ooh. tries to make a move, and he hung on to it. That was kind of an yeah. exorcist moment on Halloween. <laughs> reminiscent of Linda Blair. <laughs> Weren't you a little bit too young to watch that movie? Yes. <laughs> I'm too young now. <laughs> it scares me. Terry Arnold alone back two tight ends into the game for Cincinnati. Moving again. Here's Arnold. I don't know the seen much of Richard Hall lately. He has had injury problems this year. An ankle injury took him out of about two quarters of the game against Army last week. He came back in in the fourth quarter when they were behind, rushed for 64 yards in the fourth quarter to bring them back to victory, but we haven't seen Hall lately. Well, it's a sound plan, whoever is calling the, these right. plays, because they have trouble with the wide receivers. South Florida, a fast defense that likes to run at things, so you want to keep them in the box and run at them. And we're seeing a setup when you're seven, eight yards behind the line. It's been running an awful lot. Here you get the play action because the run was successful. 
And Gadouli throws short for Hannibal Thomas. He's another of the young receivers who's been getting more playing time in recent weeks because the veterans have not been doing the job. Thomas with the catch, just short of a first down at the 20 yard line. It looks like Gadouli's limping just a little bit. I wonder if on that face mask when he got twisted around a little bit. It doesn't look like his neck got injured. He seems to be fine there, but he certainly seems to be limping a bit. Again, two tight ends in the game. Third down and less than a yard for Cincinnati. Terry Arnold has the first down. Down to the 18-yard line. The freshman from Tallahassee. This is a dominant performance. You saw the total yards. South Florida, zero yards. Time of possession, nearly... 16 minutes to three as we round up both teams. 34 plays to nine. But you know something? You got to put points on the board if you dominate like that. Otherwise, it doesn't mean a heck of a lot. Otherwise, you're, why you're, at this point, you're one big play away from the tie score. They need to, you need to get the payoff. On first and ten, a play action fake, and throw now back. a throw back to a wide open receiver, Carl Jones, out of bounds with another first down at the six yard line. Dewan Brown had the coverage, but not very tight coverage for South Florida, a gain of 12. Well, you'll see, they'll bring him out here. It's a fake, and then let everybody flow to the left, and there they go. I mean, they bought it because they're an aggressive defense. Exactly. We've seen it with the penalties. Yep. We've seen it with the play action pass that they have bought on all those things, and it's hurting South Florida defensively. Cincinnati is dictating to My the bad. defense. I didn't know you were going to run South Florida right now. Saying, go ahead and be aggressive. We're going to take on. advantage of it. I'm just assuming it's being On the delay, Jones bottled up in the backfield. So we can drive, you know what I mean? And finally pulled down. Well, by J.R. Reed and Tavarius Robinson. Well, they need to play here. They need to play a little more disciplined. You can be aggressive, but you can still be disciplined. I mean, you got 11 guys on the field. You don't all have to be in one spot. We always say you get as many hats as you can in the ball, so you like to be aggressive that way, but you still have to be smart about it. It's a matter of trust. You have to right. believe that yeah, your teammate yeah. is going to do his job, and you don't have to try to do your job and his job. That's why I talk so much up here, because I don't know what you're going to say. <laughs> yeah, I don't trust you. <laughs> Two tight ends. Jones, again, bounces off the first hit, but can't get outside. Good team defense led by Maurice Jones, the middle linebacker, senior from Bradenton in his third year as a starter. Here's Rob Stone. You guys were discussing, hey, where's running back Richard Hall? He is fine. He's not injured. This is a premeditated offensive move. Rick Minner pulled his three main running backs aside just before kickoff and told him, guys, it's going to be a serious rotation between the three of you all night long. Well, this again, I think, uh, plays to the struggle in the passing game, the drop balls by the receivers. They're bringing cornerbacks over to the offense. Uh, so they'll rely on the running game, and their running game is 25th in the country at a buck 87 in the game. Uh, a game it's ball control offense now the shotgun on third down and goal George Murray breaks a tackle and gets very close to the goal line they'll mark him down at the one Bruce Gibson and Kevin Verpale made the stop in a decision now for what Rick Minter what do we do what do we do come on Rod you get the first pick tonight well the first pick is the first picture of this guy making a nice run and he's he's their slash I mean backup quarterback wide receiver runs well hey after the way you've controlled this ball game I think you need to get the touchdown you I gotta think, go oh I'm glad you said that so we can disagree I say you put the points on the board put the three on go up to no kick the you're field gonna goal. have to explain that well, I just said I don't have to explain anything <laughs> time out Cincinnati. Sean McDonough, Mike Golick, Rod Gilmore, Rob Stone in our College Football Friday crew from beautiful Raymond James Stadium in Tampa, Florida. Conference USA action. Cincinnati leading 7 to nothing. Rick Minter out of the timeout and had his offense on the field while we were still away at commercial. They lined up over the ball with George Murray who frequently comes in to run the option down around the goal line at quarterback. 
They were lined up waiting to go, waiting for the signal that we were back from commercial. And while South Florida looked at that alignment, they called a timeout. So this is now a South Florida timeout. Yeah, and I don't like the idea of Murray at quarterback. I think the way that their offense has performed, they've run the ball, and the way the South Florida offense has been so poor, I think you go with your regular offense, you run it, yeah. you get it. If you don't, you don't have to worry because South Florida's been awful on offense down there. And I think Cincinnati just showed their hand, so South Florida called the timeout. Now let's see if they're prepared. For Murray and what he might do. Fourth and goal from the one. Murray gets buried at the three yard line. Okay, you with me? Well, that's why I was with Golan. I am. No, no, As, no, no. And no. I said it during the commercial, <laughs> just so you guys will know that uh, you were my witnesses for the national TV audience. I agree with Mike. Go ahead by two scores. You're dominating yep. the game. Go ahead by two scores against a team that struggles to score and keep momentum on your side. Don't have this happen no. and give the other team momentum. You missed my point here. They march up and down the field with their regular offense. They get down here and they bring Murray in to run the option. And I said right before that, don't do that. Yeah. Come and run your regular yeah, you offense. Said, right. Go for it. You come yeah, yeah, if you go for your regular go offense, it, you do a good job. Should have <laughs> kicked the ball. Tim Jones did a great job. I'm sick and tired of being right. Let's move on. Crossley, the ball carrier, just trying to get some running room. Adam Roberts made the tackle for Cincinnati. Still zero yards of offense. Nearly midway through the second quarter for South Florida. And that's why you go for it down here. I, I, I am amazed <laughs> that South Florida has not used Huey Whitaker. Six foot five, 225 pounder, right down here. 31 receptions on the year. This guy is a player. Or as we like to say in the ESPN family, a playmaker. Only fitting that Casper would be playing on Halloween. Jawan Green, the ball carrier. And he stopped short of a first down. So the woeful performance on offense continues for the South Florida Bulls. Kassan Love made the tackle. Speaking of love, Cincinnati. you guys want to give me a little love for being love. right it about should, this it, one? Yeah, it should you be should 10 be to 10 nothing, nothing right, right now. now. <laughs> that's, what the, that's the love that should be out there. They're getting the ball back. They couldn't get a first Yeah, they down. had it on the one-yard line. It should have scored. Now they're going to get it on the 40 and have to drive down again, which they may do. <laughs> the punt by Brandon Baker gets a good bounce for South Florida. Carl Jones let it go, and it goes all the way to the 40-yard line. Well, the pirate ship here at Raymond James Stadium, the home of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, a fitting backdrop on this Halloween. Midway through the second quarter, Cincinnati dominating, but leading only seven to nothing. And going first and ten from its own 40-yard line. Gino Gadouli with some late adjustments. A four-man rush for the Bulls. A long throw for Thaddeus Lewis. Did he make the catch? No. He was out of bounds along the near sideline. You know, he's actually getting better play out of his wide receivers tonight. That ball thrown a little bit wild, but a little bit wide. But look at the great effort there. Nice catch. So they really are picking it up a little bit. I think they're getting better play out of those guys, and the running game has been pretty solid. So what the heck, huh? What's wrong? I'm wondering if Rudolph has a comment he'd like oh. to make. Has anybody oh. seen Santa? <laughs> Wrong holiday. Oh. Halloween. Oh. Halloween. Not, not that Christmas. has to be a little warm, too, on an 80 degree night I like that. I can't wait till we're off camera so I can take this <laughs> up. I got another one, though. <laughs> Screen thrown up for grabs. No receiver over there. Nearest was Richard Hall. But Gadouli threw that into a high traffic area. He's fortunate that that wasn't picked off. Third and ten. Well, the, so the South Florida defense has got to get a stop, and, and one way to do that is not get a penalty against you, and maybe that'll help, and try and get their offense a, a little better field position so the offense can try and do something. But this defense right now, the onus is on them. They, they, have, they have the pressure on them. Well, they like to play two deep or three deep in long situations, and the screen worked against it last time for Cincinnati. The Bearcats six out of nine on third down. Gadouli steps up and throws incomplete. He was looking for the freshman Bill Poland. He threw a bullet. Johnny Jones had the coverage. Good job by Gadouli to dodge the rush. 
But it's a punt for Cincinnati. Well, you know, we talked about the receivers stepping up, doing well. Ouch. That one Pollard probably should have had. Yep. Well, Always Brown happens. had very tight coverage. That was close to being pass interference. Here's Chet Urban on the punt. High snap, but he handles it. And a very high kick as well. Brian Fisher. Let it bounce, and it's down by the Bearcats at the 30-yard line. A 30-yard punt. Hey, Sean, you guys were right. They should have taken the point. <laughs> South Florida with six yards of total offense takes over first and ten at its own 30 yard line. They have three yards have been balanced three yards rushing and three yards passing. Oh and impressive. I'm going to keep doing it until they throw to him. It's Huey Whitaker right up there. Yeah, but you know something they got to get Brian Fisher behind center. Get him at the quarterback spot now, as long as he runs it because he has any trouble throwing it. Movement along the line but no flags. Ronnie Banks in trouble. And managed to get back to the line of scrimmage. Mar Enzor made the tackle as we check the ESPN game track. Well, again, the flags keep on coming for South Florida. Four penalties for 49 yards. And then Mike Daniels got his first collegiate touchdown. A nice little catch there. And then, oh, Cincinnati. Tried to go for the second score, didn't get anything on a fourth and short. Well, Rod, you got your wish. Brian Fisher at quarterback. You can hear the fans applauding that as well. He's much more of an option running threat. He pitched it forward. Well, you can feel energy in the stands for the first time tonight. Juan Green took the shovel pass and went close to a first down. They'll need about a yard and a half here on third down to move the chains. Well, he changes the pace of the game, the dynamics, because everything becomes a speed-oriented option when he's in there. Oh, and here he goes for their first first down of the night. Out to the 43-yard line. Jamar Enzor made the tackle for Cincinnati. Certainly Jim Levitt needed something to wake up the offense, and Fisher's doing it. Boys. They have a couple of different styles here when they go no huddle they'll call a the play line and take their time or they'll do what they call Indy like the Indy 500 they'll move it along and they'll get the play going a little quicker like they did last play here they're changing and taking their time a little more. We took over a quarterback into a game against TCU on the family of networks on ESPN 2 and nearly brought them all the way back to victory. They lost that game by three points. Clinton Crossley, the ball carrier, and the safeties, Franklin Calicott and Doug Monahan, combined on the tackle, but a good gain of seven. Well, part of the problem for Cincinnati is the fear factor with Fisher, because you know he can break off a big run on you just at any time. And his throw a little high. He was looking for Mike's pal, Huey Whitaker. Comes again, driving down to the 38-yard line, another first down. He just changes the pace of everything. Those linemen who were teeing off on Banks coming in, now they can't do it now. This is going to be a draw going this way. He has his option of, what, or, or I'm sorry, an option of what he wants to do, and he's going to keep it. He sees a hole and he hits it quick. Well, did you see number 90, Trent Cole? He didn't attack the quarterback. He just comes up and hovers. That changes what they're doing now. 12-yard gain on the previous play. This is Clinton Crossley, the junior from Bushnell, Florida, tackled by Trent Cole. Brian Fisher is from Pensacola. He was, as Rod said, a quarterback in high school at Pine Forest. A lot of schools didn't recruit him seriously because of his size. He's listed at 5'9". Brian admits he's 5'7", but he says he would be six feet tall if he wasn't so bow-legged. <laughs> he also said there's an advantage to being the shortest guy in the program. You're the last guy to get hit by the rain. <laughs> well, he has the right atmosphere about his uh, attitude, rather, right. about his lack of height. A pitch to Crossley, and he's in trouble. 
saw three Bearcats coming at him decided to hit the deck at the 35 yard line credit Jason Russell the outside linebacker from Pittsburgh with the tackle. Remember David Palmer Alabama played in the NFL. Yes. Yeah. He reminds me of you're David right. Palmer. That, that's a, it's a good comparison. Well you can't shoot a shot of him behind his old lineman and never see him. <laughs> How about that? Take a look. Can you find him? You're a defensive guy. Can you find him? <laughs> will he throw on third down and seven? He will, and it's a deep ball looking for Huey Whitaker, and it's out of bounds and incomplete. Zach Norton had the coverage with help from Franklin Calicott. Well, interesting here. They're gonna they're gonna play the field position game here. Here's a high throw again. Whitaker is six five. The ref's the right idea. It's just a bad throw. You got to give your six-five guy a chance to win a jump ball, and that's not going to do it. How about Norton? Norton on the coverage. Yeah. I think this is smart here to punt it, try and bury him a little bit. Last series out, your defense played pretty well. Start to play the field position game and try and get yourself a short field. Brandon Baker has his punt fielded by Carl Jones. He slithered out to the 19 yard line. 25 yard punt and a nine yard return. 259 left in the half. Cincinnati leads 7 0. Now that's a much better attempt at a Halloween costume than what you were sporting there, Sport. Yeah, you're right. That kid, that kid looks good. That kid's going to get some good candy. No doubt about that. Oh, how precious. <laughs> Oh, that is great. They start them on those cell phones young, don't they? <laughs> they sure do. Next thing, she'll have a credit card. And, and it's the oldest line in the book, but there are a lot of people here tonight dressed as empty seats. Uh, this is a very uh, disappointing crowd. Yep. They expected to fill most of the lower bowl, which can seat about 41,000. They do not open the upper deck here for South Florida games. They've typically had crowds of 30,000 plus at home, but on Halloween tonight fewer than that in house <laughs> problem with Ed Ardito's microphone now the last time our cameras were here for that TCU game Ed was the referee and his microphone got stuck in the on position so oh, the did. people here in the stands could hear everything he was saying he could have done play by play for the people in the in the stadium and then he had a startling admission to the crowd when he said I don't know what's going on here. <laughs> <laughs> That's never a good thing to hear from an official. No. <laughs> Referees and pilots you really don't want to hear that no. from. Boy, you're Doctors. Right. Doctors. Yeah. Here's Richard Hall. Second down and nine. One timeout left for each team. On the draw, Richard Hall. Down at the 20. And the clock will run under two minutes. I would imagine if they stop him here on third down, fellas, Jim Levitt might use that yes. last timeout. I, I certainly would leave yourself a little bit of time. The South Florida defense has tightened up a little bit, Rod. Yeah, they have. Ever since Cincinnati wasn't able to pick the up the fourth, fourth and, and goal. One, yeah. yeah. I thought Mike was about to say you mean when they didn't kick the field goal. <laughs> no I let things go. I, yes, I will do. never bring that up again should have kicked it never. <laughs> Third down and eight. Just a four man rush to throws short the tackle made on Booker Van immediately by Johnny Jones. No timeout call. Go figure. I'm surprised. You, you think they would want to use that. But this is great defense. They do this to make the quarterback throw the ball quickly on the hot route, come up, and then make the play. Absolutely. They're going to say, here's your open guy. Go ahead and throw it to him. We have confidence we're going to come up and make the tackle. Excellent stick. There they go. A little late on the timeout. Yeah, they lost about 12 to 14 seconds that they could have saved by waiting before calling that timeout. Chet Irvin punting on fourth down and five. Brian Fisher lets it bounce and it goes out of bounds at the 34 yard line, a 43 yard punt. So, guys, why do coaches waste seconds in calling a timeout? 
it shouldn't happen because no. head coaches have responsibility for fourth down decisions, last two minutes right. of the half, and timeouts. The, 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 there should have been no indecision there. You have to know when it's when it's the down and distance, what you're going to do after each play, and it should have been an immediate timeout after that play. There would have been, what, Sean, what would you say, 10, 12 seconds? When I looked at the clock, there was 1.20, yep. wondering why it wasn't a timeout, and he called it at 1.08. Yeah. Well, I think there should always be a guy, one of the coaches, ought to be talking to the head coach. Hey, we want a timeout after this play? Or, hey, fourth down coming up. We're going to yep. do this reminding the head coach so that you're thinking ahead to make the call. Well, they have Fisher in there who's not much of a thrower. No timeouts left. They're at their own 34. He can run and he gets run out of bounds by Franklin Calicott after a very short game. Uh, I don't know if I'm a big fan of this right now a guy that doesn't throw the ball particularly well because if he gets tackled in bounds and doesn't get the first down the clock is just going to run. I know Banks has struggled at quarterback as well throwing the ball but I think you want more of a you're your better passer in the game yes. right now. Yeah but at least he's trying to throw the ball to your guy. Yeah. Crossley out to the 41. Jamar Enzor made the tackle. The Bulls aren't in a major hurry here. And they're still signaling in plays from the sideline. Yeah. Wow. This is uh, I, I say that I think this is poor clock management. Not not textbook two no. minute drill. Nope. This is horrible. Yeah, that's just awful. I mean, the play clock's down to six, and they snap it. They're the team that's in a hurry. Lots of room for Fisher. You don't think they would have liked to have the timeout time and all the time they killed before running that play back now? Well, now they need to get down and kill it. And kill it. They need to line up because the clock won't start till they set the chains. They need to do a kill. Yeah, they just, they've wasted so much time. 18-yard gain. Fisher slams it into the ground. Nine seconds left. In the half. Not good. No. I, I think we've made that clear. They, they did not handle the last two minutes very well. Well, well if they had those 12 or 14 seconds right now, they'd have uh, at least a couple plays. Well, and you get that one play off quick, how much time ran off? Yep. The, the play clock was down to six. But now it's going to be simply, I would assume, your Hail Mary shot probably to Whitaker. Or something to the sidelines quickly to try to try a long field goal. Banks back in the game. Or excuse me, yeah. the third quarterback. Pat Jolmist is in the game. This guy has got an arm. This guy is a youngster, a freshman, but he coaches, talking to the coaches before the game on the field, they like this kid. He has an absolute gun. And you know what? You're going to need it right now if they're going to go the distance. He's a red shirt freshman from Miramar, Florida. He's appeared in just two games this season against Army and Charleston Southern. He did throw a 53 yard touchdown pass against Charleston Southern. He lost that toward the back of the end zone and it is incomplete. And time has expired. In the first half. At the half Cincinnati seven and South Florida nothing. This is homecoming for the University of South Florida. School that started football just seven years ago. A lot of homecoming festivities on the field during halftime. You know, you talked about them starting just a few years ago. It was amazing to see their facilities or lack thereof. Yeah. We went over their campus yesterday, about 20 minutes from Raymond James Stadium, and they're Football offices, there's, there's an illegal procedure. Flag of the play. Prior, to the, Prior snap, to the snap, false start, start on the offense. offense. Five yard Five penalty, yard penalty. still first down. first down. Frank Davis, who's from Panama, guilty of moving early. This is the home of South Florida football. They're in trailers yeah, over like on the campus. Three of them, as you can see. Very tight quarters for the coaches. Very few meeting rooms. They actually meet over in a cafeteria. 
in the middle of campus. Fisher escapes in trouble again and will not escape this time. Jason Russell, the linebacker, drops Fisher for a loss back to the 23. The good news is that they've managed to have a winning program in seven years, making these transitions, working out of those facilities, and in April they're going to open a beautiful new 104,000 square foot building, 18 million dollars. It'll be one of these football palaces we see all across the country now. And, and nobody's happier than yeah. that guy because he used to sit in that trailer and it's near the baseball field. Yeah. And they hit home runs and they'd land on the roof. But during batting practice, he'd get pounded off the roof of his office. That's amazing. Visitors would say, what was that? He would become immune to it after a while. Said, oh, that's just the baseball team taking yeah. batting practice and the home runs land on my roof. Come Tuesday after they accept the invitation, they'll say we can't have that in Big East football. We'll show you a look at Coach Levitt's office. A lot of these uh, offices look like Fortune 500 executive suites. They want a flag, and oh, a very late flag thrown by the field judge. Jim Levitt was screaming at the back judge with whom he's had a running commentary, Tom Compton, because Tom has thrown a couple of late flags that have gone against him. He didn't get the flag from Tom, but he did get it from the field judge, Derwin Williams. Boy, oh boy, I was almost a talked into. Defensive pass interference. Gavin Holly had the coverage on SJ Green. The previous spot. Automatic first down. Coach Levin went running down the sideline, screaming at the back judge in the middle of the field as if to say, Come on, you've thrown a couple of those against us. Where's your flag? He didn't throw it, but the field judge did. Well, he came across with his right hand for the block, and nah, I tell you what, bad. I didn't see anything. Nah, that's terrible. That looked like an excellent play. Pat I'm not, not going to say anything. Quarterback again. <laughs> Bad call. And Jewel missed. Who's more of a thrower than a runner? Tried to run. After the fake into the line, and he's dropped for a loss of two back to the 36 by Andre Frazier. Now here's a look at Coach Levitt's office. No it place is, to put the pictures. No, it's, it's awfully crowded, and we were in there yesterday. Look See all, all the tapes? tapes. Yeah. yeah. There's no place for those things to go. Wow. <laughs> and yet they're 48 and 25. He's the only head coach they've ever had. He's from St. Petersburg. Was an assistant at Kansas State when he was offered the head coaching job here. Took a $15,000 pay cut. That was very nearly intercepted by Davin Holly. Elgin Hicks, the intended receiver. And Holly came within an eyelash of his fourth interception of his junior year. And why isn't that offensive pass interference if that last call was defensive pass interference? Because Jim Levitt didn't yell that time. Look at the move he makes. He makes the move, he's going to catch the ball, and he gets tackled up high by the receiver and no flag. Look at this. If a defensive player had made that move, they would have thrown a flag. And what. that's what's wrong with officiating on pass interference. Were you a defensive back? Of course. Dolmas going deep, <laughs> very deep for Hicks. Oh, and yeah. there's a flag yeah. from Coach Levitt's friend thrown against Doug Monahan. That, I believe, is going to be a good call. <laughs> you know, if that's the percentage, if you run those Defensive last three pass, plays. 15 yards in the previous spot, first down. If you look at the last three pass interference calls, one of three is correct. I this don't even one. know after Boy. looking at the replay what Monahan did there. You know, the ball was behind, so badly Hicks, thrown. Hicks was looking to come back for the ball, and Monahan didn't know where the ball was, so he kind of kept going forward. But you can at least see how the official would call that one. The other yeah. two. That's Juan bad. Green, the ball carrier. Juan Green, the ball carrier. On first and 10 from the 49, he took it to the 46 for a gain of three. Now it's Rick Minter's turn to chew on the ears of the officials. We're at Raymond James Stadium in Tampa for the first ever meeting in football between Cincinnati and South Florida. This is a Conference USA game. Sean McDonough with Rod Gilmore, Mike Golick, and Rob Stone. Cincinnati leads seven to nothing. The lone touchdown was in the first quarter on a two yard pass from Gino Gadouli to Mike Daniels. Mar Enzor took down Pat Julmist at the 45 yard line. And it'll be third down and six. Look at Enzor. He looks like a middle backer. He just, he just smacked the last two running back, the last two ball carriers. 
He's got the look of a middle linebacker, that kind of sick look on your face, your <laughs> pads twisted up, the menacing look of I'm going to maim you when I hit you. It's a beautiful thing. Rick Minter raved about him yesterday. Nice run by Joel Mist. And a first down at the 38 yard line. Doug Monahan made the tackle. And we spoke with Rick Minter about Enzor yesterday. He said, Great strength, great explosiveness, great intelligence. Not much more you can be looking for out of your middle linebacker. This guy who split the starting time last year still had 101 tackles, it was a sub the year before. Clinton Crossley, the ball carrier. Crosley's been their leading rusher each of the last two seasons. They don't typically have a rusher run for eye popping yardage because they rotate a lot of backs in and out and they throw the ball a good percentage of the time. I think they need to go back to Fisher at quarterback now. They're getting close to the area where they're going to get a lot, of more, lot more man coverage. Good catch by Allenson Sheffield on a throw that was a little bit in front of him from Jewel Mist. And the junior from Miami went out of bounds. Near a first down, looks to be about a yard short at the 29 yard line. Cincinnati, Mike, typically plays a lot of zone, but as they get backed up to their goal line, they go to man coverage. Right. And the option and Fisher would be very good against that. Because your receivers, you're right, would just run off uh, the, the, the defensive backs in man coverage, and it would give Fisher more room to run. Excellent point. Interesting, very tightly bunched formation here. The Jill missed the quarterback, the handoff to Dewan Green. And a first down to the 25 yard line for Green, who played two years at the University of Georgia before he transferred to South Florida. They've been waiting for Green to bust a long run. He has excellent speed, but hasn't really broken off a long run yet this year. Out of the gun. Clinton Callum, the ball carrier. He got banged down by Tawan Hagler. And there's a flag down on the play. That's going to be holding on Elgin Hicks, number 22, out the wide receiver position. Again, going against South Florida. Hicks trying to hold his block out there and held on a little too much. Holding on the offense. Ten yard penalty from the previous spot. Still first down. Hicks another transfer. He spent one red shirt season at the University of Florida before coming to USF. See, he held on to that jersey. He had his hands inside, but once the defensive back tried to get away, he held on, and the ref sees the jersey stretch out. So that's what they call because he really didn't have a hold of him that bad. But as soon as you see that jersey stretch out, they're going to throw the flag. If you're going to hold. You got to make it worth your while. Back at the 36 yard line, first down and 20. Pump got fake him. by Joe Mist. He got the man wide open. Hicks is open. Touchdown, South Florida. Well, that was quick atonement for the holding penalty. What Elgin we... Hicks, the touchdown pass, capping a 10-play drive. And what did we say? You're one big play away from being right back in this game. Yep. Cincinnati dominated for so long, but then the old okie doke on the out and up. The 36-yard pass, Jill missed. Finding Hicks, the extra point up and good from Santiago Gramatica. And USF struggling on offense all night long is now tied up with Cincinnati midway through the third quarter. Back at Raymond James Stadium in Tampa where South Florida has just tied it. On a 36 yard touchdown pass and pass you'll miss to Elgin Hicks. A 64 yard drive. They had 65 yards of offense in the entire first half. Good kick by Justin Geisler. And taking a knee in the middle of the end zone, Tedrick Harwell. This is all you need to see on this play. Watch Holly 18, the corner. He comes up, he bites. Right now, there's a the receiver. He bites on the pump fake. 
He comes up seven yards, inexperienced. He was a wide receiver most of his career, has only been a defensive back for a short period of time. He let Hicks get by him by simply biting on the fake. Well, I tell you, I wonder at what point he was just praying somebody was back there that Monahan was back there, but he wasn't. I can guarantee you, as soon as he took three steps forward, he thought, oh, no. Richard Hall carries for four to the 24. Craig Coble made the tackle. He's starting at defensive tackle tonight in the place of Cedric Battles, who injured his knee during the week in practice. The whole domino effect of this is the offense is getting chances because the defense, again, after the fourth and one stop, seemed to really start to tighten up, and they're really kind of stopping the run and, and got that Cincinnati offense out of sync now and giving their South Florida offense a chance. Under seven minutes left in the third quarter in a 7-7 game. These two teams try to stay in the race in Conference USA. A long shot that they could win even with two losses, but a lot of the teams ahead of them play each other. The Dooley, the ball carrier, he has a first down at the 31. Steven Nicholas made the stop. I'm not sure how often you want Gadouli no. to run the ball like that. He, he's a big guy, 220, 225, six, three and a half or so. He's not particularly swift. No, and every, every time I've seen him go down, it's been head first. And yep. when you're doing that, someone's going to light you up. It has been a tale of two halves here in Tampa. All the handoff. And he smothered after a gain of one. Maurice Jones, the middle linebacker, a three-year starter who's after your jobs, guys. He says he either wants to be a color analyst or an actor someday. He's taken some classes that have got him involved in acting, and he thinks he might have a future as the next Denzel Washington. I think that's the way to yeah, go. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I, I yeah. think you should go to be acting. an actor. Yeah. yeah. Forget about the broadcast. Yeah, don't do that. No money he called a lot of his teammates out. He wasn't acting either after last week's game. Oh, he said he wanted he to beat did. somebody up. He was so mad at all the stupid penalties. Here's Hall in the open space and all the way down to the 46-yard line of South Florida. Kevin Verpale made the tackle, but it's a 22-yard game. Well, Hall's the one doing a little calling out here. Look at this. This is really a long handoff with a lead blocker. And he gets right in behind it. They get outside to the edge quickly. And that's just great running, you know. And Hall had the bad ankle. It doesn't look bad anymore. It was bothering him most of the season. I think the last week or so, he's starting to come back to his natural, healthy self. And they stick with Richard Hall. He twists down to the 41-yard line. That's a gain of five. It'll be second and five. Courtney Davenport made the stop for the Bulls. Watched a, a lot of film on Hall running, and I like the way he runs. He's, he's not a big move guy. He's not going to shake you. It's kind of a subtle move where it almost looks, doesn't look like he's doing it fast enough for it to work, yet he slips a tackle, and he keeps going north and south. It's a really a deceptive style of running he has. Yeah, I think that's right. Deceptive, and he's very deliberate with it. He rushed for 7,400 yards in high school at Wyoming High School, fourth in Ohio State history. Low throw intended for A.J. Lucius, one of three tight ends they use regularly. It'll be third down and five. Paul had his career day against Miami earlier in the season. He rushed for 161 yards and three touchdowns. Again, coming in to the game, as you see there, 15th in the land in rushing and they've needed it this year with the passing being down well, he thought he should have been the guy last year he was eligible to play last year and didn't get many carries third and five the crowd trying to help the south florida defense gadulde with a blitz coming has to get rid of it and finds a man booker van the fullback down the sideline and pulled out of bounds inside the 15. kevin verpale Saved the touchdown. At the last minute, Gadouli found Van, and it's good for a gain of 27. And what a tremendous catch Van makes on this ball. This ball is not really thrown very well, but watch how he makes a great athletic move, gets out in front, catches that ball. It's something. Watch this ball from this angle here. He really has to go forward to get that ball. It's a nice job, and what else have Courtney Davenport was getting out there in coverage, and he slipped and fell down. 
but you're right, a nice catch. From the 14, first and 10, it's Hall again, tripped up for a loss. Excellent penetration by Steven Nicholas. And he he made the play. I mean, you talk about a guy doing more than his job. All he was supposed to do was to take on the blocker and force it back inside. But he took on the blocker so deep in the backfield, he actually made the play. Well, that's what you're going to say. What you call a trap in the trapper so much, but you want to block the blocker before he can deliver it on you. You go deliver it on him. Make the back adjust. Second and 12, Gadouli looks in the flat, it's covered, so he wisely throws it away. He had Leroy Selman Jr. right in his face. Bringing up third down and 12 at the 16. It's a family affair for the Selmans here. We mentioned, we spoke earlier with Leroy Sr., the athletic director here. Leroy Jr.'s mom is a nurse on the campus, and he has a brother and a sister who are students at USF. Tenth play of the drive for Cincinnati. Third down and 12 from the South floor to 16. Out of the gun, Gadouli. Running away from the rush, he throws it away. Again, Selman in hot pursuit of Gadouli. Wow, great pressure. And we, we saw a smart decision by Gadouli early in the game, bad decision later. This again was a smart decision. Don't try and make something out of nothing. Get the possibility of a turnover. Now you're in good field goal range to take the lead. Uh, he made two smart decisions on third and fourth down, throwing the ball away and making sure that he didn't get flagged for grounding by making sure he got the ball beyond the line of scrimmage. This will be a 33 yard field goal and it's Chet Irvin interesting because we mentioned earlier on the shorter kicks usually it's Chris Manfredini. When we asked Coach Mitter he said it would be Manfredini out to about 35 or 40 yards. This is just 33 but instead it's Irvin and that's a good decision. He just drilled one right down the middle but there's a flag down. And it's against oh. Cincinnati. You know, we wonder, too, guys, with Cincinnati, would we have seen the last couple of play calls had their offensive coordinator been here? Again, Rusty Burns not here, had some issues early in the day, went to a, a facility here, and he's not at the game, so the offensive coordinator not making the calls, and I'd say you wonder how much that's plays are, are different than what he would be called. I checked on Rusty Burns' status at halftime with Bob Goyne, the Athletic director said he is resting comfortably. They are going to hold him overnight, but they don't think it's anything serious. That's good. Good news. And that's wonderful news. Just feeling a little under the weather. So Irvin tries again. And he put it in just about the same spot that night. Net right between the uprights. A 38 yard field goal for Chet Irvin, and Cincinnati reclaims the lead. Back in Tampa. And the kickoff from Chet Irvin comes down to J.R. Reed at the 10. And a nice run back by the starting safety out to the 35 yard line and then some late flags with some pushing and shoving well after the tackle was made a 25 yard return. And that'll bring the ball out to midfield. Here's Rob Stone. Well, guys, you're talking about Chet Irvin's shoes, right? This is his backup pair, and basically what it is, it's a it's a ballerina shoe that they ordered from the Pelfrey Professional Kicking Service Company out of Nevada, and they got studs on it here. Basically, they talk about it, it it's like a, a boxer taping up his hand. You get it nice and tight right on there. And I know Mike Golick, you were talking before the game, it's, it's low heel. He never slips out of it. I know you're worried about that. And as he says, that's the first thing everybody asks, do I slip out of it? But no, so that's it. A little ballerina shoe with studs. Actually, I'm worried it's a ballerina shoe. Yeah, I know you are. Oh, I'm not saying another word about kickers. Wait, don't don't you do ballerina? Uh, could you see me in a pair of those shoes? I'd blow them out. Pat Jilmiss still the quarterback. There's DeWan Green bouncing off the pile and shoved out of bounds by Franklin Calicott. I noticed, Sean, you didn't have a comment about the ballerina shoe. Uh, I really have nothing to add to that. I don't know anything about ballerina shoes. How much grief uh, must how he get? How about soft spikes? You know, I, that's more my speed. Soft spikes? Uh, yeah, I don't know. But I know this. He must get a lot of grief from his teammates you know, about ballerina shoes or 
what, Pilates, shoes, I don't know, what, whatever those things are. Now the shotgun on second and five. Clinton Crosley took the handoff. He delivered a blow to the defender and picked up the first down at the <laughs> at the 39 What's yard wrong? line. Yep. How are you? Is that uh, Mr. Osborne, we presume? Oh. Sean! <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> what was your budget for these? I mean, that Rudolph thing couldn't have cost more than two or three bucks, this, and this uh, thing's pretty weak, too. It's donated. Donated. I had to give some money and I got this in return. <laughs> I got the actually I, they wanted candy. I said, no, I'll give you money. Joel Miss throws to the far sideline, incomplete. Out of bounds, intended for Dewan Green. I'm a big fan of Halloween. What can I say? I, I, I love Halloween. It's it's one of those nights when you should just give out all the garbage. Don't give out apples. Don't <laughs> give out toothbrushes. Don't give out pennies. It's all give out the garbage. The garbage. Let the kids eat it. That's all about the that's, candy. That's what it is tonight. Let, them, right. let them have some fun. Like what? Do you have any <laughs> pointers? My head really is starting to itch. I can't believe he's wearing <laughs> that thing. <laughs> it's starting to itch. <laughs> Allenson Sheffield out of bounds. Well, you, you know, a short completion from <laughs> Jewel Mist. You know, he's been like this all day. I, he's he been, tell, he's not know. making this up to TV. He's been like a little kid all day. I, I love Halloween. I really do. I, I, my, I, I go out with my kids when I'm home for it. I know they're out having a great time. Little jerks wouldn't stay in and watch the game. Watch their dad on TV. Now, is that guy in costume, or you yeah. think he would have come that way anyway tonight? <laughs> Still missed on third down, throws way too high for Brian Fisher. And with 316 left in the third quarter, South Florida will punt from the Cincinnati 37. Again, good call here. Some of the fans may think to try and go here in this position, try and bury him in there, and you hope for that stop again by your defense. You're just a field goal down. You want to try and work the short field. Was that Ozzy's talking or was that you? No, talking? if Ozzy said it, you wouldn't understand a okay. word he said. Brandon Baker sends it a mile high in the air. This goes into the end zone. You know, we'll talk about picks later, but let me say this. They are not that bad. They're not as bad as they appear last week. God, I would hope not. Boy, you wouldn't hope not. But Rod, you and our picks will be coming up in a little bit. We made picks on all again. Think Rod's so sturdy on that big limb he just walked out on there. They are not as bad as they look. <laughs> <laughs> Terry Arnold. If they are, they have huge problems. <laughs> Jones kidding. made the tackle. A gain of one. A lot of people make the mistake of thinking that however you played in your last game defines yeah. what you are as a team, and that's not true. You're, you're never really as good as you may appear in that blowout win, and you're never really as bad as you appear in that blowout loss. But there is something with Virginia Tech. When they get run on, they get beat. I mean, because yeah. they've been so good at stopping it that when they get run on, that's, that yep. has been their downfall. So can Miami run on them? Up Jared Payton. Second and nine, Gadouli throws short of a first down and a good tackle prevented Hannibal Thomas from eating up that first down yardage. Johnny Jones made the tackle. But that's a nice throw going left there by Gadouli. That was a nice throw, put it where it had to be. It's third and short now. Let's see if they can move the chains or South Florida can get out of this with some good field position. Third and two as we go under two minutes left in the third quarter. Cincinnati looking for its fifth win of the year. Leading 10 to 7. Carl Jones alone back. They spread four wide receivers. Gaduli a threat to run out of this formation as well. Gaduli takes off and has the first down. Out to the 33. Good call, Sean. Right, that's it. You know, you, you need the short yards like that. You take the snap, let the rush start, and just pick your hole. You find out where it's going to be. You see the back shifted right before the play. That became his lead back on Courtney Davenport, and that helped get the first down. You are so right on the money because Gadouli had Jones move, move over, over. Yeah. right before the play. He saw what he needed to have to adjust to that play, and that set up the run. Sean, what are they going to run here now? I don't know. <laughs> I, that was kind of my one for the night. <laughs> I take my chips and go home. 
Carl Jones in a tailback. They're going to hand it to the tailback. For those of you who may be watching on a slight delay, out to the 39-yard line. A gain of five. J.R. Reed made the tackle, and the clock will run under a minute left in the third quarter. You know, since throwing that interception in the first quarter, Gadouli really has managed the game much better. Yep. And he's playing much more like the veteran quarterback you'd expect him to be. A guy who started since he was a freshman. He had a lot of upperclassmen around him as a freshman and a sophomore, but now he's he's the guy as a junior. There were 16 completions. Ten different receivers have caught balls. Nice play by Kevin Verpale, the safety, as he laid out Kyle Kester, the fullback. After the nice play by Steven Nicholas, he's the one that came up and forced it, kept contained, didn't leave his feet, made a duly throw it, and made Verpale get an easy hit on that one. Kind nice. of a nasty hit from a guy who's really a softy during the day. Kevin Verpale is student teaching in a high school in the area with special ed students from 7 in the morning to 2 in the afternoon. He teaches all day then heads right over to the USF campus to go to practice. He's a married young man with two young children. But as Coach Levitt said it's like he turns on a switch once he gets on that football field. Gadouli under duress escapes has a man open and it's too high. Intended for Terry Arnold. Craig Coble was nearest Gadouli forcing him to escape to the left and throw errantly. South Florida continuing to make plays Mike on third down bringing pressure and then playing zone behind it. They are still making some decent plays. That time Gadouli got outside the pocket yep. which put a little pressure on him but the pressure they put on Gadouli helped them make the third down play again. Get Urban to punt for the fifth time. Brian Fisher back for it. Oh my. That's a little bit of a shank. High and short and down at the 39 yard line just a 22 yard punt. Joel missed. Takes off on the run. It's pulled down by Taiwan Hagler at the 47 yard line, perhaps the 48. That'll be the final play of the third quarter. 15 minutes left in regulation time in Tampa. Cincinnati leads 10 to 7. Back in Tampa for the start of the fourth quarter. Cincinnati with a 10 7 lead. But it's South Florida with the ball near midfield looking at second down and one at their own 48 yard line. And on the sideline Huey Whitaker blocking on the last play it appeared to injure his leg and he's getting medical attention on the near sideline. The handoff inside and a first down for DeWan Green out to the 50. Let's go back to the previous play and see if we can find the injury to Whitaker. Him blocking, he's getting it landed. Oh. oh yeah. So you never know it's coming. You're out there blocking. You're just blocking. All of a sudden, people are all over the back of your legs. Out there, looks like they'll tape him up again. See if he can go. Nothing doing that time for Dewan Green, wrapped up by Kasan Love. As we check the Seiko storyline in timely fashion. Gino Gaduli has been efficient, especially since the interception. You see the touchdown pass, Mike Daniels, first of his career. And a little bit of work out of South Florida. Yeah, Elgin Hicks with the touchdown reception. A great play fake. You guys are great at sharing that stuff. Incomplete pass. That's what we do. Instead of for Brian Fisher. Is that considered costumes? What's well, a weekly outfit though? Mm -hmm. Maybe they're not the actual uh, cheerleaders. Oh. Maybe it's a group of young ladies who have come dressed up as cheerleaders tonight. As long as they're not guys dressed up as <laughs> there cheerleaders. Are, there are some guys down there dressed up like girls. It's just, it's it's, it's an it, embarrassment. It's Halloween though. <laughs> well, that's true. <laughs> well, the only shame is they did it last week as well. <laughs> Third and nine. Cincinnati rushes five, and Joel Mist is in trouble. 
And he could not get away from Taiwan Hagler. And a sack all the way back to the 40 yard line. Third sack of the night for Cincinnati. Trent Cole also came to the aid of Hagler, and South Florida will punt again. Well, with Hagler, it's all about speed. And if you don't get in front of him and have a little help, he will run past his blocker. He used that speed and quickness that time. And if Baker punts, very high punt. Hey, Ozzie Goldick, is that one of your uh, offspring? That might be Jack. Where's uh, where's Sharon? Where's your wife? Yeah, that's <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> Boy, people are really in the Ooh. spirit here tonight, aren't they? Love that. <laughs> Out of the shotgun, Gino Gadulli on first and ten for Cincinnati, and the inside handoff to Richard Hall, who is dropped for a loss of a yard in the play. Second and 11, Hall out to the 26-yard line. One of the most hotly debated questions of this week as I watched ESPN was, who is the best team in the Big Ten? I think Michigan came back to life in the game that we did against Minnesota. Look at their whole season was about to go out the window. I still think they're the best team. I pick Michigan State in this game. Uh, I, I noticed I, I'm that. riding, you know, Jeff Smoker <laughs> coming back. I mean, they, they, they got it going on right now. They have something happening right now. It's working pretty well. And, you know, I'm going to ride it with them as long as I have it. Uh, until they see Michigan yeah. tomorrow. <laughs> I'm with Sean on this one. I, I think it's all about Navarre. Since that fourth quarter, his team has been fantastic. That's been a rivalry in recent years dominated by the home team. That game is at East Lansing tomorrow. Gadouli scrambles, running out of time, just threw it away. You know, Which the, one do you pick, Nebraska I, at Texas? I pick Nebraska. I'm telling Texas is an underachieving team. Oh, come on. Texas, for the come talent on. they have the last couple of years, they have underachieved. Come on. They've been running up against Oklahoma, which has been the best team in college football the last four years. Texas has a lot of talent, and they've been <laughs> underachieving. I'm sticking to it. <laughs> yes. Nebraska, one year off the radar screen there. And they're, this will put them right back on it. This could put them back on I think we'll learn a lot about them tomorrow, if they're back or not. Playing a legitimate opponent on the road. Chet Irvin with a booming punt. Fisher all the way back to the 18. <laughs> well, he's fun to watch even when he isn't going very far. He brought that one back to the 28-yard line. 55-yard punt and 11-yard return. I, I think that's an unfair knock on Texas. I, I really do because you look at what they've done. They've done a lot of good stuff. But Oklahoma has been phenomenal yes, the last four years. If Oklahoma is in another division, Texas, we may be talking about them and how great they are in the Big 12. But over the last four years, Oklahoma and Miami, nobody could touch them. And we're blaming Texas for underachieving? I, I'm, I'm saying Texas has the talent. I thought a lot of people thought that one or two of the years they were picked to be near the top, and they haven't lived up. You thought they were better than Oklahoma? Well, I, they, they I, obviously come on. weren't. <laughs> I'm so what saying, about this year? Are they underachieving no, this year with two losses? I think they absolutely are. Yes. Well, certainly you would have thought they would beat Arkansas. Well, and that I, win looked really good for Arkansas, and Arkansas was a little more impressive earlier in the season than they have been late. Well, we say underachieving. You guys say underachieving, and it's a team with a new quarterback. And anytime you change your I didn't quarterback. I say underachieving. I was just asking the question. Well, this man said underachieving. I don't want to side with goal you again. You know, with him. They're again, underachieving. I've already reached my quota tonight. <laughs> of two, oh, I but think. But wait a minute. Oklahoma, Oklahoma State. Oklahoma tomorrow? I Oklahoma. 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 Okay. All right. I don't see it happening again for Oklahoma State. Fisher, the quarterback on second down. He got banged back by Jamar Enzor, but they'll give him forward progress out to the 38. I'm going to thanks the starting quarterback here tonight, fellas. One for six. Fisher, two for six. Joel Mist, three for seven. It has not been uh, a good passing night, no matter who's been in there. Joel Mist, watching him throw before the game and talking to some of the coaches, like I said, they, they love his arm strength. Now, he's a young kid, so it's a matter of him getting the program down making quicker decisions and getting the ball where it needs to go. But I think this is a guy to keep an eye on in this passing attack if they want to spread the ball around. 
Fisher the quarterback on third and one two tight ends in the game. Crossley is the tailback. He got slowed behind the line but might have picked up the first down. Looks like he did get it across that yellow line or at least right on it. And the yellow line does not lie. Doug Monahan made the tackle for Cincinnati. Last thing I want to say about Survival Saturday and a team we didn't mention, a team that's been incredible this year, USC. That offense, but they get Matt Leinart has come in and done a fantastic job. They have an aggressive deal, a lot of talent on that team. I think they beat Washington State tomorrow, and I think I think this is a team that has the potential to make a move. Did I pick Washington State? You probably did. I, I don't think I did. I think I picked USC. I think you did too. <laughs> but remember. <laughs> For all the talk about USC, they're not in first place in the Pac-10. No, they're not. Look at the look at the battle over whether it's a first down or not. That's a first down. Well, the game against TCU earlier this year, which many of our viewers saw, Jim Lever was very upset about the lack of a measurement at the end of the game. Now it's Rick Minter who isn't very happy about the way that measurement went down. Coach Minter, 49 years old, a Lou Holtz disciple, started his coaching career as a graduate assistant under Lou at Arkansas. Coach for him again at Notre Dame as his defensive coordinator. By far the longest tenure of any Cincinnati head coach in his 10th year. The previous long had been six, including the late great Hall of Fame coach Sid Gilman, who had been the winningest coach at Cincinnati until Rick Minter passed him this year. Minter now 52 wins and 59 losses. As Cincinnati head coach and one one of the things both these coaches have said about the imminent move to the Big East is how it will help recruiting how now guys will say OK I want to go to a team that's in the Big East that's in the BCS package when we have a shot to go to one of those big bowls it's going to help recruiting for both these teams Fisher throws it out for Allenson Sheffield and a flag thrown and the flown thrown in the field of play. It also looked like Sheffield might have been hit late, but this is going to be for a holding call against USF. Uh, Mike, just to go back to your point about the Big East move, both coaches believe that it's important when they're in the living rooms of these youngsters that they're recruiting to be able to say you can play in a BCS Bowl and you can play for a national championship. Holding on the offense. Ten yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Still second down. Again. Receivers downfield gets his hands on the outside. See him rearranging the jersey a little bit. Keep him inside. Keep him inside. Were you surprised to hear the coaches say that it's so important to tell kids you can play for a national championship, even if you're a South Florida or Cincinnati, where it's not realistic that you're going to win a national championship in the near future. But you're going to you have the potential to get to that big bowl and I think that's that's appealing to some to some of these kids. That you'll miss back in. He has the big arm. That's too big. Intended for Elgin Hicks and covered by Zach Norton. It'll be third down and 11 from the 38 yard line under nine and a half minutes now left in the fourth quarter and Cincinnati still leading by three. And you just wonder how South Florida is going to get the yards to get downfield other than a big play. I mean they put really not a whole lot the very little together tonight. They get the big touchdown off the play fake but nothing really sustained. Yeah I don't trick I don't think they're going to trick Holly again with the play fake. And their best receiver Huey Whitaker still on the sideline after coming off with the foot injury suffered while trying to block Joel missed. Pulled down at the 45, about four yards short of a first down. Taiwan Hagler and Jason Russell ran him down. I think it was a little later in the game. Jim Levitt would think seriously about going for this. Now this is the right move. He's got to play field position here. Boy, these quarterbacks, when they pull the ball down, they're just looking to run, guys. I mean, they're not even looking to try and get out and make a play outside the pocket. Ninth punt of the night for Brandon Baker. And it's a fake. And he just threw it up for grabs and it's broken up. And what a smart play by Jawan Hall. He didn't even try to pick it up. He just knocked it down. 
He's only a freshman out of Detroit, but he did a great job on that play. Intended for Patrick St. Louis, who was broken up by Jawan Hall. This had no chance. Back in Tampa, Cincinnati up 10 to 7. South Florida tries to fake punt. Johnny Jones here goes out to the right. He's wide open. Punter does not see that, goes to his left. And let me tell you what, Coach Levitt let him hear about it when he got to the sideline. He was absolutely pointing to his right, saying you had Jones wide open over there. All you had to do was look. He's got no business making that decision, though. They shouldn't even have gone for it there. So he's been playing punt and field position all night. There's still plenty of time left, and instead of trying to tip the field position back in his favor, he took the gamble, and it didn't pay off. Although, if he had thrown to the wide open man, it might be an entirely different situation right now. Yeah, Jones he, was wide open. Yeah, you just read his lips there saying, all he's saying is wide open, wide open. He was talking about Jones, who took off to the right. But you always have to ask yourself, what if? What if you don't make it? Yep. Now, and you put your, your defense in this position where a score could end the game for you now. Eight minutes left. The handoff to Richard Hall again. He reverses his field. Fumbles. It's still free. And the Bulls have recovered at the 47-yard line. Cedric battles, who did not start tonight because of that knee injury suffered in practice during the week, recovered the fumble. The defense just saved Coach Levitt's call. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they did. <laughs> Was that Jamie Murphy who came up with it? I, it looked like it was Jamie Murphy, 55, who who jumped on it. I'm sorry, Cedric Battles, 55. Rick Kravitz, co-defensive coordinator, fired up after the second turnover of the night by Cincinnati. Juan Green. Goes into Cincinnati territory at the 48-yard line. Tamar Enzor made the tackle nearly midway through the fourth quarter now. Cincinnati leads 10 to 7. South Florida needs to do is move the chains a couple of times, get themselves in the field goal. Gramatica kicked a 45-yarder this year. He's got plenty of leg. Pat Jill missed. At quarterback, he was the third quarterback to work tonight. That's a shovel pass and an incomplete pass. Batted down by Trent Cole, who's lived up to his big reputation tonight. The junior from Wilberforce, Ohio. And finding themselves in this position, guys, tonight way too much. Third and long. Well, you, you know what you're going to get from Cincinnati. They're going to try and bring pressure underneath they're going to play zone behind it right now the shotgun on third down and six Whitaker still not in the game for South Florida there's a bullet and a nice catch by Hicks Joel missed you can see why the coaches love his arm that was a frozen rope and a nice diving catch made by Elgin Hicks at the 37-yard line, an 11-yard gain and a first down. Well, they got the expected coverage, and they ran a deep enough in route in front of the zone and behind the pressure coming up. Quarterback draw. Jill missed. Inside the 30 and down at the 28, about a half yard short of a first down. The safeties, Franklin Calicott and Doug Monahan made the tackle. Oh, they're in Gramatica's range right now. Guys, let's remember what's at stake for these two teams. The loser can pretty much forget about making it to a bowl this season. You know, South Florida loses, they're definitely out. Two of their wins against one double-A opponents. They don't count toward the six minimum wins you need. So they need to win all four of their remaining games, including this one tonight. Dewan Green carried for the first down to the 26-yard line. South Florida going into a pretty good breeze here in the fourth quarter. And here would be a long field goal into the wind. Here's a reverse. Fisher cuts it back inside and goes down at the 21. 
After a five yard gain, Taiwan Hagler with a solid tackle to bring down Fisher. <laughs> this is great. You know, we've got survival Saturday tomorrow. These two teams trying to survive tonight to make it to a bowl. And Fisher, who's played quarterback, punt returner, wide receiver, trying to pick up a first down. Second and five. They show blitz off the near corner. Green ran away from that, but didn't get far. Oh, to that, the 20, and that's it, where he ran into Jamar Enzor. Called Enzor's name a whole lot tonight, haven't we? Yep. He's been tremendous. Good range. 220, not overly big for a middle linebacker, but usually when they're that size, they can really go sideline to sideline. Well, we'll see if they're playing for the field goal here or playing for the first down. I wouldn't be shocked to see another quarterback draw. They're looking at the sideline for some signals once they get over the ball, and then a timeout called by Cincinnati. Now Rick Minner didn't like something about what he saw. First timeout used by either team here in the second half. 526 remaining. South Florida trails by three. And they'll be at the Cincinnati 20 with a third down upcoming when we come back. Huey Whitaker still on the sideline. South Florida's best receiver. Trying to shake off a foot injury. Big play for his teammates. Third down and four at the Cincinnati 20. The Bearcats lead by three with 526 left. Joel missed a quick throw. Hit stayed on his feet. And he's down inside the 10 yard line. He got away from Franklin Calicott and finally Zach Norton made the tackle. A gain of 13 first and goal Bulls at the seven. That play worked because of arm strength. He got the ball there before the defender could break on it. That's a run the route to the sticks turn and the ball's going to be delivered. That's what they like about this kid. <laughs> that ball got there Boy, right now. Let me tell you what he can whip it. South Florida has struggled through much of the season in the red zone. This is a key possession in the red zone tonight. Shovel pass Fisher to Crosley. And he goes down inside the five. Michael Brown, a backup linebacker, made the tackle for Rick Minter. Now I like this. They have Fisher at quarterback. It gives them options down here. They can run the option. They can run the shovel pass. They can run the power game. I think having him in the lineup now is a good thing. Tenth play of the drive. Set up by the fumble by Hall at midfield. Fisher communicating with Crosley. Option again. Fisher's in trouble and he gets smothered. Back at the seven yard line. Taiwan Hagler and Mike Wright. Wright the biggest of that defensive front forward about 290 pounds. Cincinnati and South Florida each looking for its fifth win of the year and each trying to stay on the fringe of the race in Conference USA. Friday night fights coming up next. This has been a little bit of a slug fest. It hasn't been an offensive showing by either team. But it's been competitive and entertaining. Fisher needs to get rid of the ball and he throws it short for Crosley and that's a big loss on the play. Oh. Would have been better off just throwing it away. That's Instead, he dumped it to Crosley. He goes out at the 13-yard line, a loss of six more. Well, I mean, obviously, he doesn't have a ton of experience. I know he played quarterback at, in high school, but the experience to know in that position, you're in a lot better shape to throw that ball away. Yeah, that, that's exactly right. And Crosley needed to, to just let it go, knock it down. And you have an option quarterback who is trying to make a throwing play out yeah. there. Not going to happen. Here's the youngest of the field goal kicking Gramatica brothers, Santiago Gramatica. 30 yard field goal. This is brother Martin kicks here for the Tampa Bay Bucks. And that kick is good. Brother Bill kicked here at USF. There's Martin Gramatica. All three of the kickers were recruited by Jim Levitt. Martin to Kansas State when Jim was an assistant there. Bill and Santiago here to USF. Tied up with three and a half to go. Tied at 10 with 333 left here in Tampa. Sean McDonough with Rod Gilmore, Mike Golick, and Rob Stone. 
Santiago Gramatica just kicked a field goal from 30 yards to tie the ball game, and now Justin Geisler will kick off. Kicking into a pretty decent breeze. And a good kick into the wind. Comes down to Tedrick Harwell near the goal line. And he's tackled at the 20. Here's Rob. Well, Sean, the Gramaticas are the first family of kicking in the U.S. Or with Martin. He's been on the sideline with his brother all game. They're actually roommates as well. What, what kind of advice do you give your younger brother, Santiago, during the game? Oh, I really don't. I'm just here for him, whatever he needs. But uh, I don't give him anything. He, you know, he's old enough. He knows what he's doing. So I just pretty much, if he needs anything, I'm here. If not, I just leave him alone. There's already two Gramaticas kicking in the NFL. Does your youngest have a chance to be there as well and join you? Oh, for sure. I mean, there's no doubt that he'll be in the NFL. I just hope I'm playing long enough. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Congrats. Good luck Sunday. No problem. Thank you. All right, Rob. Thank you. On first down, it's Carl Jones. He's shown a tough running style, even though he's not particularly big, just 5'9", 185 pounds. He turned that into a nine-yard gain, tackled by J.R. Reed. He really does. It's almost like when you come to tackle him, you, you almost don't think you need to hit him as hard because he's so small. He just he keeps those legs going. He keeps that great balance. He's got positive yards. Well, you know, he was a defensive back, so he's got that, that attitude for being tenacious on the field. Jones outside to the left has the first down and goes out of bounds at the 33. Cincinnati has two timeouts left. South Florida has all three. You don't want to jinx anything, but you know what we haven't seen in a while is a flag. <laughs> It's been a little while since we've seen any laundry thrown out there by the refs. The Dooley 16 out of 31, 115 yards passing. They're staying on the ground here in their own territory. Jones got them out to the 36. That'll be under two and a half minutes remaining by the time they next snap the ball. Craig Coble made the tackle. Set up Rod, play action, getting ready for it. Rod, well, you know, run, yeah, you run. kind of figure yeah. it's coming. Yeah. Yep. There haven't been many shots taken deep down the field by Cincinnati tonight. That pass caught by Jones out of the backfield, and then he was tackled by Maurice Jones. It's another first down out to the 44. But Cincinnati is trying to deal with the USF defense on first down and second down. They like to play man coverage. Right. They like to bring pressure. So they're trying to run it, pound it inside. And then on third down, they know the defense likes to play a little bit of zone. If they can get it short, they'll get man to man on third down, play action, and take a shot. Richard Hall, the running back now. They're going to stick with the ground game. Kevin Verpale, the center, up to, uh, the safety rather, up to up and Hall at the 46 yard line. Either way, it seems like they're going to make sure that there's not going to be a lot of time left on the clock for anything, whether they're going to go for a Hail Mary, whether they're going to get close enough for a field goal. Jet Irvin, the long field goal kicker, has a long this year of 44. He would be kicking with a pretty good win. Hall tripped up behind the line of scrimmage by Steven Nicholas. He is certainly an emerging star. Craig Coble also in on the play. And a timeout called by Cincinnati, leaving the Bearcats with one with a minute and 19 seconds remaining. Big third down and 10 here for Cincinnati. They've been relying primarily on the ground game tonight. Haven't had the season long problem of drop balls tonight because they haven't thrown the ball. Well, if they don't get the first down and it stays inbound, expect South Florida to call a timeout. All the passes have pretty much been like this. A little screen to Thaddeus Lewis. First down, and he almost went all the way. Terrence Royal ran him down from behind at the 33 yard line. First and 10, Cincinnati. <laughs> Remember, Mike. This is a defensive back converted to wide receiver just a couple of weeks ago to help out in the wide receiver spot. They run a quick screen on third and 10 when they've had nothing going and they get a big play. That's a great call though. It's a great call because it's safe. You know what, it's gonna be a completion or if he drops an incomplete or if you get tackled, you still have possession, you punt and you're still in a tie game. That was a good safe call that worked out for him. I thought an excellent play call. 
It'll be a 50 yard field goal from here with the win. The pitch back to Jones, and Maurice Jones made a terrific play. If they were in borderline field goal range there, they're not really in field goal range here back on the 37 yard line. Yeah, make that now 53 yard field goal. <laughs> well, maybe even 54. And time running down. Look, men are waving them up to the line, but it's almost as if they don't know what they're supposed to be doing when they get to the line. Second and 12. Jones down to the 30 yard line. That would be a 47, perhaps 46 yard field goal try. J.R. Reed made the tackle. Timeout, Cincinnati. The last timeout for the Bearcats. Which raises the question, do you try to kick the field goal right now? I think they have to kick it. Without another timeout, I don't think they can run another play, get themselves lined up, and kick the field goal. I, I agree. I think they absolutely have to kick it now. For those of you who went with us earlier, it's an important game. Rick Minter said a win tonight for these teams keeps them with a slim chance because there are some tough games remaining for TCU, Southern Miss, and Louisville, including Louisville and TCU going head-to-head -head next week. First time two ranked teams in Conference USA have ever played each other head-to-head. -head. They've had more than one team ranked at the same time before, but never have they gone head-to-head. -head. We have that to look forward to in Conference USA. And if South Florida loses tonight, absolutely no chance to go to a bowl game. Yeah, I, I don't think Cincinnati can catch up with Southern Miss or TCU. But I think they're fighting to stay alive for a bowl and nothing more. I don't think they can win Conference USA. South Florida, as you mentioned, this field goal, if it happens right now, they must stop it or else they can forget about postseason this it's, year. It's not. They're coming out to run a play. Oh, boy. Well, it better be a pass. Boy, oh, boy, you got it. It's a know. run that doesn't get a first down, doesn't go out of bounds. The regulation time is going to end. Timeout, South Florida. I think they're calling time because they're shocked. Cincinnati might be a break for Cincinnati. Give them a chance to rethink this. Well, and I think that's a pretty good timeout by South Florida. I mean, why not get yourself together and regroup and be prepared for this thing if they're going to run a play? You got a pretty good chance of stopping it, getting yourself ready because you know, hey, if they're not going to get the field goal, all you got to do is tackle them. Well, if they're going to run a play here, here's the thing. Badouli's got to. Either if he's going to roll out, he'll be out of the pocket. So if there's nothing there, throw it away. Don't even waste time. Don't tuck it down and try and run. Either take your shot, make sure it's past the sticks, so it's a first down, because then you can get up and kill it, or you throw it out of bounds and you kick the field goal. That's if they still are going to run, are going well, to run the play. The problem is they may make a play and run and pick up the first down, and the clock will stop momentarily, right. and they still may have trouble getting the playoff. With 15 seconds, I think if they get the pass off quick enough and get, and get set, because the, the clock would be stopped, they could get a kill play in. I, we'll I, see. I think they're better off taking a shot at the end zone here. The Dooley out of the shotgun, just throwing short. And it does exactly what Rick Minner wanted. Stops the clock and gets them some extra yardage. Wow. To make it a much shorter field goal. It would have been about a 46 or 47 yard try. Now it's going to be about 41. Wow. You know, he got it done. And as a defensive back, you can't allow that to happen. No, you have to be aware that you got to protect the sidelines and keep them in the ball field. Now Chet Irvin. And Jim Levitt's going to call a timeout. The completion, Gaduli to Murray, got them to the 23 yard line. It'll come down to the foot of Irvin, sophomore from Sulphur, Kentucky, out of Henry County High School. He's got he a leg. The punter added the field goal kicking duties this season. You mentioned mostly the long field goal tries. They've used Manfredini on the shorter kicks. He does have a long of 44. And he's made, and he made a field goal earlier tonight. And he's made five over uh, over 40 yards. So, I mean, he certainly has some good accuracy from that range. And he has that shoe, that, that ballerina shoe he That's, uses to. It, it is really amazing that there's no back on the shoe. 
I, I don't know how I really don't, it's, it's got to be molded so tight to his foot but how it can stay on. It takes until Tuesday to get it off. Look how low that, sh that shoe is. There's no heel. Look at that. It's it like, looks like somebody stepped on the back of yeah, the shoe yeah. on the old flat tire. <laughs> Well, this is in all likelihood to win the game. A 41 yard try. With the wind at his back, and it's a pretty stiff breeze. Distance should not be an issue here. And South Florida is going to use all of its bullets. That's the last timeout for Coach Levin. Well, that's a good call. You can't take those timeouts yeah. home with you. The ultimate freeze, yeah. huh? Ice him a little bit longer. Well, again, so it's a. With the kick, because it's a little more distance, you, you have to think of the. Kicker's going to try and get some distance distance on it. Sometimes it comes out of there a little low, so you make sure they're on the hash a little bit. You make sure you shift your block off to the defensive left a little bit. Don't come straight up the middle because that's not where the ball is going to go. You see how he's got all this time by himself and nobody is near him. He's by himself at around the 50 yard line. All his teammates are over on the sideline. He's been by himself for about two minutes now. This time out and the last time out. What you think about it? Pressure on the snapper and holder as well. Yep. Jeremy Slicker is the snapper. Colin Carey, a backup quarterback, is the holder. And all Gino Gaduli can do now is watch. Rush has got to come from the defensive left side. Ten seconds to go. Irvin trying to break a 10 10 tie. It is blocked. Well, you talked about it, a low kick perhaps, and they went flying over the top of the pile in the middle. Guess who came in the game? He's been out. Huey Whitaker has been out, has not had a reception today, had the bad ankle. He's six foot five. He was the jumper, and I think he's the one that got it. Oh, did he get up? Oh, oh, I don't my. even know if it got up to him or if somebody got it below that. Oh, it hit oh. Whitaker in the stomach. That's what I talk about. When, when a kick is that long, it tends to come out low at times. Wow. He has been able to play on offense because his foot's been bothering him since he got rolled up on while blocking. South Florida will just take a knee at its own 26 yard line, 27 yard line, and go to overtime. Heading to overtime here in Tampa, tied at 10. the way it goes when you win yeah. the toss you like to go on defense to see what happens and when you're on offense you know what you need to do here are the overtime rules most of you know it by now each team is guaranteed one possession starting the opponent's 25 yard line in each overtime until the winner is decided there is no game clock there will be the play clock and if we get to a third overtime and you score a touchdown in the third overtime or beyond you must go for a two point conversion each team has been to overtime once this year memorably so Cincinnati needed three overtimes to beat Temple and South Florida went to double overtime to beat Louisville the Cardinals only loss of the season USF won it on a field goal by Gramatica all time Cincinnati five and three South Florida two and oh Cincinnati first from the twenty five. Richard Hall lined up as the tailback and gets the call and gets nothing. Tackled by Stephen Nicholas. Well, Cincinnati has been consistently running on first down and second down for a good quarter now. This would be a good time for them to play action, Mike, right, and take yeah. a shot. Because going first, they need to think touchdown, not yep. field goal. And that's exactly why South Florida went on defense won the toss and went on defense to see what Cincinnati just as you said Sean see what they do and then see what their offense has to do. 
Richard Hall alone back now with two tight ends on the field. Play action pass. Got they do him. take their shot deep and they have a man open. Touchdown. Dennis Hart, the tight end, gives Cincinnati the lead. That's about as easy as they come right between J.R. Reed and Kevin Verpale. That's where Hart was running. Great throw. Great throw. Well, we talked about their tendency. First down, second down run for a good quarter now. They've been doing that. Play action now on second down and nine. Breaking the tendency. Perfect for him. Chris Manfredini to try the extra point. 25 yard touchdown pass and the extra point up and good. Hart accepting the congratulations. He'll get a lot of congratulations at home too. He's from a huge family. He has six brothers and seven sisters. <laughs> Run like that to the dinner table. Make sure you get some of the food. Nothing Fourth catch of the night for Hart. They had a span earlier in the game when they went to him on a couple of plays yep. in a row, and then they did not come back to him until right now. But you call it, Rod, with the play action, you get those defenders to stick just for that moment, and it gives the tight end, in this case Hart, the chance to split them. Well, and that's exactly what happened in that replay. You could see the linebackers step up on yep. that run, and he just slipped right in behind them and kept running to the corner. Well, they made that look easy. Second touchdown pass of the night for Gadouli. So here comes South Florida. Has to score a touchdown and kick the extra point to extend it to a second overtime. And they have Brian Fisher at quarterback. They spread the field with four wide receivers, although ordinarily when Fisher is the quarterback, they run. And Fisher takes matters into his own hands and gets five to the 20. Trent Cole made the tackle. So Mike, do you like Fisher being in here now or would you prefer to see a quarterback who can throw a little better right now? Well, I'll tell you what, Fisher, Fisher gives you such a great dimension and could just break one on you. You're looking for a big play and he's the one that can get it, but Joe Mist really kind of gave a spark and really got that gun, but I think, I think Fisher gives you the better chance right now with this playability because still I don't know if you can trust the passing of any of these guys. Shovel pass to Clinton Crosley got them to the 19. A gain of only one. Third down and four. Andre Frazier made the tackle. And when you put Fisher at quarterback, you lose him as a receiving threat. Yes, you do. Yes. yes. All right. Yeah. Right now, though, you've got the option. This is their best formation with Fisher quarterback. Speed option possibilities for them. Juan Green spins for the first down. They were obviously in four down territory. Field goal does them no good. Franklin Calicott made the tackle. First and ten for South Florida from the 14. I think they are better with Fisher at quarterback when they have the two backs yeah, I agree. instead of the three wide receivers. Then you really have the defense thinking which way is it going to go. Because I agree with you. I think we're getting ready to see an option as well. Out of the gun again. There's a shovel pass again. That's about as risky as they want to get. Yep. Throwing the ball forward with Fisher out there. Andre Frazier made the tackle on Clinton Crosley. Well, understand what you're missing here as well. Huey Whitaker. At six foot five, here's an area where you could run that fade, which would be kind of a safer play. Now he's in the game. He's up at the top of the screen. But you're not going to have Frazier, uh, rather uh, Fisher, throw a fade. Yeah, it would be difficult. But I'll tell you what, I would still want my chances. See, I I, I don't like this formation. I I think this limits what they can do with Fisher in the red zone. Second and seven. A late pitch back to Crosley. Bulls his way close to another first down. Looks like they'll mark him at the five, about a yard short of the first down. Hassan Love made the tackle. It looks like they are determined just to continue to pound it downfield on the ground. Well, Crosley is really doing the pounding there. I mean, he does a nice job of breaking a couple of arm tackles to get inside the five. They go to this tight formation with every tight end in the program on the field. <laughs> Fisher almost collided with Crosley, and if he got the first down, it isn't by much. 
Looks like they're going to mark him right on that yellow line, which would be a first down if the line judge doesn't move that foot. They seem confident that they have the first down because yep. they're sending multiple wide receivers on the field now. Yeah, they're going to measure, but you're right. They do have the first down. As you say, they the yellow line never lies. There you have it. Although sometimes you need to get the nose of that ball all the way to the far end of the yellow line. I wonder if they have the longer or the shorter ball out there. Which one are they using? <laughs> Sorry, Sean. <laughs> he got it. First and goal from the four. You're right, though. Safe play calling, not getting too crazy. Well, if you're Cincinnati, I think you have to think about bringing your ends and your linebackers off the edge hard now, forcing a pitch if they run the option. Fisher bounces outside of the left, down to the goal line. Touchdown! Why that's such an excellent play is because Fisher's so fast, he gets to the outside before the linebackers can pursue. You have three wide receivers left. They're just going to get in the faces of the DBs, and you have a fast guy playing quarterback who gets to the corner quickly. Now the extra point they have to have to force a second overtime. He's 20 for 21 in PATs this year. Trouble with the hold. And the kick just does flutter through. The punter Baker had trouble with the hold. And Gramatica just did get one to wobble through the uprights. We'll return with overtime number two from Tampa as College Friday, College Football Friday continues on ESPN2. We're back at Raymond James Stadium in Tampa and heading for overtime number two. Sean McDonough with Rod Gilmore, Mike Golick, and Rob Stone. Friday night fights coming up next here on ESPN2. Well, here we go again. Two things. Number one, I was involved in one of these last year that went seven. Arkansas and Ole Miss, seven <laughs> overtimes. Come on, come on. <laughs> Secondly, I can't stand the overtime system in college. Really? Why? Hate it. Why? I love it's it. Ridiculous. I think it's great. It, it does. It, it. It's not a football game. You've just played an entire football game, and now you're not. What, Where's you... the kickoffs? Where's the special teams? Uh, Where's the punting? Yeah. Play a football game. I, I don't miss the kickoffs. I don't. Why miss isn't any that of part that. of the game? It's it, part it, of the game, but it is part of the but game. To me, there's this, this isn't the game. This is a lot of excitement. It has a way of bringing some finality quickly. You have a choice. You got to try and get in the end zone. I like that. I, I like to play. I just busted my hump for 60 minutes. You know, I, I, I want to finish what? it with a football well, game. You, you like the NFL system. You Absolutely. bust your hump for 60 minutes and let some little guy trot out there and kick a field goal and end the game without anybody having a chance to play anything else. Tough hole there, I'll tell you. Getting it down. I don't know how that didn't get blocked. Didn't look like a bad snap either. No, it just looked like Brandon no. Baker, the punter, he, did. he doubles as the holder, had a little trouble with it. I would take the NFL system over this in a heartbeat, and that even oh. needs some fixing. I, I love this system. I think it's great. It'd be great if it were football. <laughs> This is exciting, though. It's fun for all. <laughs> Here's DeJuan Green. Oh. How did he get through? Towards oh. the end zone. No signal yet. Touchdown. Oh. Oh. I love this system. <laughs> <laughs> He breaks one tackle right there, a second tackle, and wow. then out oh. runs, folks, to the corner. And he's got a broken knuckle on his left hand, and he makes that effort. Now, he was a 100-meter state champ in high school. Wasn't a long jump champ, and almost 
thought about it there, the way he took off. You know, guys, you talk about the talent at South Florida and what they recruit here. Think about the guys that go to other schools and have transferred back right. to South Florida from places like Florida State, Florida, and Georgia. It tells you how much talent is in this area. Long delay here before they attempt the extra point. That was a very tired looking defense Rick Mitter had on the field there. Yep. Some arm tackling it's and a, Sean, a real a, struggle. It's a, it's a great point. That's the first thing that happens when you start to get winded is you don't bring your feet to the tackle and you just reach your arms out there and he went right through them. Juan Green, a 25-yard touchdown run on the first play of second overtime. 15 carries for 66 yards tonight for Green. And now another important extra point for Dramatica. With Baker holding again. Justin Daniel is the snapper. This one's up and good. So now Cincinnati must score a touchdown and kick the extra point to force a third overtime. It certainly does skew the stats. Oh, without a doubt. I mean, you have a 10 10 game that could end up 42 to 45 to 42. Now, that, that I agree with. I think the stats could be, could be handled differently, but the system, I think it works. It's exciting. It gives each team an opportunity to score. It, it, and it brings a lot of excitement to it. I mean, it's what they have now, so you take it, you deal with it. I don't like it, but certainly there, there is excitement to it, no doubt about it. Now you know exactly what Cincinnati has to do. They yep. have to get it in the end zone. Why don't they just do what they do in the NHL? Take men off the field. Yeah. You know, every overtime four you four. have to take two men off. So, you know, if you get to... And if you go over ten fourth minutes... overtime, you're playing with three guys. Or that, you <laughs> just put the thugs on and you, and you fight. Last that man standing wins. <laughs> Clearly not football. <laughs> <laughs> now Cincinnati must score. It's a small crowd, but they're making a lot of noise. And it's the fullback, Kester. There's a new wrinkle. And it surprised South Florida as Kester went for nearly 10 yards. He's a transfer from Indiana University. And he's big. He's listed at 240, and he ain't 240. He's more than that. He was 240 about a couple of years ago. Yeah. <laughs> nice run there. Second and less than a yard. Now Richard Hall the lone back. Two tight ends in the game. Hall had a key fumble in the second half. I'm not sure he got to the first down marker. He did not. They're going to spot him shy of the 15. It'll be third down and less than a yard. Courtney Davenport led the defensive surge. Well, there was nothing there, and then when there was nothing there, Roddy tiptoed. I mean, you just got to put a shoulder down, and if you got to barrel through your own old lineman, you got to do it. I take a shot, you know. His third down here, take a shot. The newly keeps. I don't think he got there. He did so. not. It's going to be fourth down, and still about the same distance. They're not giving him anything. I wouldn't be surprised if they use their time out here. And remember, their offensive coordinator is not, not here tonight. They've done it sort of by committee, at least for part of the game. Well, you elect to stay with two tight ends and no lead blocker. For Richard Hall. Hall bounces outside oh. and gets it with the second effort. Looked like he was stopped. Ball game over. And with that last move, he was able to lunge forward to the 14. Bruce Gibson with the tackle. How many yards after contact? I don't One, like that call, two, fellas. I know he three. got there, but wow, he's talking about a slow developing with wide you. play. Yep. Too deep going off the corner. A lot of penetration by South Florida. That was effort on Hall. Yep, that individual effort. Four yards after contact. 46 yards rushing for Hall on 23 carries. Two per carry. Gadouli throws to over. Hall. It is intercepted. Ball game over. Leroy Selman Jr. wound up with the football. Inbounds. South Florida wins.
That was supposed to be a play deep, Rod. You talked about a take a shot. That's what they wanted. South Florida covered it, so the back just tried to sneak out after the rollout and the block. And there's Hall, hits him in the hands and bounces off his helmet. And there's Shellman being an athlete. Well, he was being an athlete, but he was also hustling. He's the defensive tackle who makes his way out to the sideline to try to be involved with the play to chase down the back. What a heck of a play. Oh, Rick Minner's going to be sick. Well, he called it an elimination game, and his team now is, for all intents and purposes, done in Conference USA. South Florida's dreams of a bowl game still alive. They need to run the table against East Carolina, UAB, and Memphis to be eligible. Once again, the final score in double overtime. South Florida 24, Cincinnati 17. Now for Rod, Mike, and Rob, our entire ESPN2 crew. Sean McDonough saying good night from Tampa and happy Halloween.